Ghost Blade Edition. Hi. Howdy. Hey, everybody. What's up? You know what, Dave? I think you shouldn't be on this episode because you didn't go to Blade. I'd, I am more yeah. than content to just let this shit record and go back to playing The Witcher 3, so... He, he tried to, like, post stuff all we all that weekend, though. I, put, I made one post. I, I, one I post. <laughs> I didn't have time to look at Instagram. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I mean... I didn't do shit on Instagram or emails or any of that stuff. Yeah, I thought you guys crazy. were going to be posting a lot more content. I was quite oh, surprised. Believe me, we we definitely tried. Oh my but god! Between it, between not having service and the app just crashing, um, but we probably posted ten percent of what we attempted. Yeah, is the reception terrible there? I feel like I've heard that before. Well, it's like ten thousand people in one little you know area trying to. Yeah, post shit on Instagram. That, that, that complimentary we knives Wi-Fi is not going to support that. I, it was very I never, funny. I never even got to connect to that. It was because they're stealing your information, no. dude. Because Jake <laughs> showed up halfway after the show was over, but that's beside the point. It's a, only on only on Saturday. It's a it's a brain drain. They're trying to steal the designs off of your phone. <laughs> all the all the true. knife makers there using the open Wi-Fi. It's a trap. It's 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 <laughs> a trap. Insert Admiral Akbar here. Elijah, As watch out. Any, yeah, as if there's any stations left in the, open in that factory that aren't making Elijah designs. I was just saying, were they just handing out Huawei phones for you to use uh, on the Bluetooth? I mean, on the Wi-Fi there. <laughs> Huawei. Here, here, use this. <laughs> use this phone. Hmm. Please connect to our Wi-Fi. Please Another take thing, pictures uh, of all your new prototypes. <laughs> um, Austin was supposed to be joining us, and he still will be uh, a little later on. We, we called him, and he happened to be in the car. It's not like he didn't know what time we were doing this. And because we're Real interested Austin. because we're interested in such a high-quality audio for you guys, we couldn't accept him just using his phone. Oh, <laughs> man. What, what, what a prick. <clears throat> Why are we sucking his dick anyway? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Austin, doesn't you're cause out. problems for me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's, let's just dig right in. Brian, how was the show for you? I had a really good time. Um, I did well, so I can't complain. Yes. Uh, I did find out that I am too friggin' old for partying after standing all day at a table, though. <laughs> it's already setting uh, in? Uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, after all day there, we, I, we would go out to dinner, and I would just, it would just be me and a couple guys, had a quiet, easy dinner, because I didn't want to even talk at that point. Hmm, that's then, funny. I don't remember going out to dinner with you or being invited. Or the three times that, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know what? You're full of well. You didn't. You may not Actually, have gotten it, but I I talked to Lev on a few yeah. times, and it was always oh, we ordered food, we did this already. So well, why do you suppose that is? Not because we were trying to ditch you, Brian. Because the other guy, Jake, was lying dead on the bed. Oh, on the I'm not. I didn't, the whole I didn't have time. a problem with it. I'm just telling him to, in another way to go fuck himself. That makes sense. <laughs> That's all I wanted you to do. Yeah, after, after the number of times you've told people to go fuck themselves, you gotta you gotta get creative. <laughs> <laughs> Start finding new ways to do it, like going I'm through my personal assistant. Yeah, we, need, we new insults need to be. Uh, that's what you need Invented. to do for next year. All right. Well, Brian, you did have a very successful weekend. That's yeah. true. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Those daggers were incredible. The chicane is beyond exceeds my expectations. I need one badly, um, and obviously my my expectations were pretty high. You know, because I know you. You go to. Go to New Jersey Motorsports Park. <laughs> Get all the chicanes you can possibly want. NJMP is a good yeah. place to hang out, actually. You just slip the autocross guy an extra 10, he'll, he'll put three extra chicanes in the course for you. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess that's not old yet. Well, here's the thing. I can play the part of our viewers who didn't go to Blade, so I can ask, I can ask those questions. Yeah. yeah go for it. Here's, the answer is going to be shut up, Dave. Uh, Brian, did you decide on a price for the chicanes? I remember that was a big deal last episode. Yeah, Shut I got up, all Dave. the I got all the pricing worked out for it. So, is it something you could share yet? Um, I really don't want to go through all the pricing right now and all the uh, different options. Oh but... no, I mean, what, what did the what were they selling? For, what were on average? I don't know. What did the the gray one sell for? The um, they went for all of them. Well, remember, even the one that, Steel. Yeah, even the one that didn't look like it had Donna Steel, it did. Yeah. So they all typically they went for eleven hundred dollars and up. That's pretty cheap. I expected worse. That's awesome. Yeah, they're not bad. And that one dagger went for like what? You finally got an appropriate amount of money for one of those. 
for both, both daggers. daggers. Both daggers went for over four grand a piece. Did they? I, I only saw the one on Instagram. Yeah, obviously, I only saw the one on Instagram. So that one went for like forty five hundred, and then the other one went similarly. No, the, that one went for just over four, and the other one, um, I was going to put up for an auction again, and somebody made me an offer, and I said that he couldn't it. refuse. Nice. That's a good number. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome to hear. The funny thing is, I don't know who got any of these. I haven't seen anyone. And you'll never see yeah. them again. It's just Son of a Critch got a chicane, and uh, I saw Eugene Kwan got one of the mini typhoons. I haven't seen shit else. In what? our hotel Many in our hotel, hotel room is where most of the deals went down. Oh, shit. That's some backdoor shady shit right there. Did you yeah. have any pee yeah, tapes you were selling? <laughs> there was we, nothing we that went down there. What are you talking about? Yo, we took it a step further from the like the guys that you know show up on Thursday are the ones that actually get all the deals. Now we we went we went back to the hotel room and made our deals before the show even started. Damn, you guys were probably buying the P tape from Custom Knife Factory. No, I was just impersonating them in the rental car. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an issue. I don't know if everybody knows about it, but that was an issue this year. Blade stopped us from getting as many um, exhibitor passes as they have in the past. So, hence, hence why I was Jackie Chan for most of the show. <laughs> do, do people just bootleg them? Like, isn't it just a piece of paper you can photocopy? Pretty much. <laughs> uh, but, we're not uh, that we're endorsing that. Right. So a, a lot of people were pissed off because there wasn't nearly as many people in the early as in the past. Because it used to be, a, I mean, in years past, you would go in there and there'd be almost as many people in there on Thursday as there was on you know Friday. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean... I I don't disagree with that, but I did notice <clears throat> there were some legitimately some there were like big booths where I mean that there's yeah I mean people, big they chunks of metal that you have to bolt together and shit hauling like, all that fun. stuff in and out like with two people was not a reasonable task. So I think well, Gavco had a fucking couch. He, yeah, blow up couch though. Okay. So if you had a booth, you were able to bring five people. Unless you went and bitched at him, apparently if you bitched at him enough, they were able to give you do something for you. And um, the tables, you were allowed two. Oh, That's to be okay. in there early on Thursday. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Leong Ma. I was yes. gonna say, how did, so who did you guys end up getting passes from? <laughs> Leong and and Aaron came through. All right. Yeah, it was a, it was a good time, and everybody looks at you. We Jake and I had ours like pinned to uh, the bottom of our shirts. And as we were walking through the hallways on Thursday, everyone was looking at our crotches with hunger. <laughs> at least that's the way it looked to us. <laughs> I I am more than sure they weren't, but you're probably so. Right. So what was what was Thursday like? Did you guys get to do anything? I mean, yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, what did we do on Thursday? Do we even nothing. make? Do we even make it to the? I mean, you guys got in at like, like three ish. So yeah, we, we got, got to like five or something. Five by the time we got. That's what time we ended up in the airport, and then by the time we got the rental and navigated through the planet that is the Atlanta airport. Yeah. Oh, it's the worst. It's gigantic. <laughs> it's not that bad once you get the note. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. And uh, uh, by the time we were in the hotel room for like five minutes, uh, Brian and, and Bill and Matt all came in, and then uh, Son of the Critch and his buddy, uh, they joined us as well, so it, we did a, like a little private showing of all of Brian's Ooh, knives there. Which little circle good. jerk, little <laughs> circle jerk. Well, Jake was in the shower most of the time. Uh, Tearing out but, the lungs. <clears throat> I was just in in the shower coughing, <laughs> trying to wash the hip. And I didn't even realize. Like I, we've been talking uh, back and forth via Instagram with Son of a Critch for probably a year now, and I had no idea that that's who was in our room. <laughs> yeah, it was, like honestly, it wasn't, it was, wasn't until after the he goes, "Who was that guy?" <laughs> yeah, until it wasn't like the next day, and then there was this Australian dude randomly did like, <laughs> what you know, in the corner. Yeah, and I was just so sick. Crazy. It was everything was just a haze for me. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I mean, that that's interesting. Do you guys regret not staying at the the venue hotel? Not even a little bit. Brian, where did you stay? Did you stay at the venue hotel? I, I stayed at the same hotel as I did, at the um, Embassy Suites. At Embassy. The uh, suite now, of Embassy. I've, I've stayed in probably a few a few of the hotels around the area now. I've stayed at the venue twice, and then I've stayed at other ones. Um, it's so fucking loud in there all night that it sucks, you know, when you stay there. Because 5 o'clock in the morning, people are still fucking partying. Jesus Christ, yeah. And... It, you know, it goes right through your door, so it's. I, I prefer to stay off that, that, out of that building if I could. All right. Well, yeah, that works. 
No, no to self for when you never go. Yeah, that's no, likely. No, no. Yeah, that's likely. I don't think it'll be much of a problem at the New York show. I'm telling you, man, you would fit right in. I mean, you would fit in maybe as well as Sweaty Lev on this. I, I don't want to say that I take that as an insult, but I take that mildly as an insult. He left slug trails everywhere he went. <laughs> it's kind of true. So it was, was, the heat, was the heat as legendary? Was it as Dude, a, it, 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 it was, no, it was funny, disgusting in there. It was steamy, but I tell you what, it wasn't even close to as bad as it's been in the past. This was probably yeah. the coolest one we've had in five years. Jesus Christ, really? On Friday, it yeah. was like room temperature and there was no problem. Saturday, it was, it was much warmer and I had basically hiked over uh, like full speed from the hotel so uh i was a little sweaty on saturday for the entire day you probably fit right in with the sweatiness yeah it, it the show, wasn't as bad the show, I wasn't, wasn't as bad as everyone it was like said. after the show like that's... that depends you, you breathe heavy and you start sweating yeah it's true <laughs> I... <laughs> he gets out of the shower and it's like he has beads of sweat on his head already it's, it's, like, it's, I, I, it's true as soon as i get out of the shower i sweat it's crazy. The, the sweaty guys weren't even as gross as the blatant prostitutes that were in blade show oh there was a lot of that i didn't expect like booth babes what yeah what no uh, booth booth babes are one thing these were hookers i there tell you what the, it's when funny five dead, years ago just hookers. five years ago there was maybe one girl in the whole place oh yeah i'd believe that this, this all happened in the past five years yeah c wait can we, can we back up on this prostitution thing are we are we confident about that or are we just making some wild uneducated guesses Wild, Pretty educated guesses. Okay. Yeah, it was like wild, but but I can't imagine a any other s scenario. You I can't imagine any other. There's probably there, some but. dirty old men there looking to solicit some prostitutes when they're away from their wives. So I'm <laughs> not, I'm not surprised by that. Knife makers, dude. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? The like, most lecherous group of people. Very savory, you know. Which, all of them. <laughs> I did. I did get some marital advice from Mick Strider that was. Uh, Su surprisingly unsavory. <laughs> mm. Oh, something unsavory yeah. coming from Mick Strider? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Mick Strider was one of the surprises of the show for us. Well, yeah, it's a very pleasant well, surprise. Really awesome dude. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. I assume he's nice in person. Yeah, well. Hi. There you go. Yeah. But... Okay, well, that's one thing. A uh, booth, babes? Yeah, you know, I'm not super surprised that those are there. I went but... to the Medford booth, and there was not a Medford to be seen, just bait boob. Oof. Bait boobs. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't, there wasn't, Greg Medford wasn't one of them. He wasn't posing naked. Uh, thank goodness. I mean, I, you know, I didn't like Greg Medford, and then that post on Instagram actually endeared him to, endeared him to which, me a little wait, bit. Which, which post? The one where he's ass naked at the grinder. Oh, yeah, Just because yeah, yeah. it was so unexpected. But I have yeah, worse like pictures of Jake. I can only imagine oh, what you yes, have pictures you of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I um, I have not been drinking or, or partying in general at all for really for a long time. Something about the you know having, having the kids, kids yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And Saturday night, I guess it just kind of happened. I think that was the night that I that we sent you the video. Uh, Tim or Eve and I were we, were we can have a whole segment about that. Just thrashing you verbally, and I took mm. some video that we sent to you. And then, he said he loved me in it. I did not hear and, any verbal thrashing. I only that heard can, that's after the camera turned off. Okay. Yeah, once yeah once he saw the camera was recording, everything changed. But uh, wow, oh God, that, was, that started in the mobile. pit and and ended on our way back to the hotel when we stopped at a gas station and bought beer. And Aaron was, of course, heavily intoxicated, and, and I was just so inspired by how happy and drunk he was that um, I let my guard down a little bit on Saturday. Yeah. And that was it for the rest of the show, because then he acted like he's the only person on Earth that has kids. <laughs> <laughs> I was the only person there with the bubonic plague. I mean, if you had the bubonic really plague, has, there's definitely yeah. more than one person there that has it now. Yeah, seriously. That was that was that was a surprisingly reassuring aspect of it was that uh, w as we were meeting people, they would shake Lavon's hand, and then they would get to me and, and be like, uh, "I'm not shaking your hand," because everyone already knew that I was sick from following our social media. Your patient zero, <laughs> dude. The epidemic that yeah. started at Blade 2018. I have yeah. to say, <laughs> the amount of people that came up to us and recognized us from yeah. this show Let's was absurd. Get, yeah, get, a lot. The, a lot more than I thought. Get the thank yous out now. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Really. Thank like, you, That everyone. was crazy. Very inspiring. Yes, I was flattered and um, to, to quote 
uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny. Uh, I really hope that my thank yous sounded sincere because they really were. Um, and I had a blast talking to you guys. And, and uh, it, it's weird when a bunch of people who appear to be strangers know all of your inside jokes and deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah. Um, and, and that made for a lot of fun at the show. Yeah, ditto. Yeah, I'll ditto, I'll ditto that too. Yeah, sure. Brian, did anyone, did anyone offer you to take you a ride? Take you for a ride in their race car or anything? No. Did anyone give you a hug? Uh, a couple people tried. <laughs> did, did people just yell <laughs> catchphrases at you? Have we been reduced to like a Gallagher-esque act where people just there yell catchphrases? Catchphrases definitely happen. We were never people above People were screaming China D2 at us and we're like, yeah, yeah, China D2. Yeah. A lot of Chinese. Wait, wait until we're like Dave Chappelle and people are yelling, "It's Rick James, bitch!" And that, but that's us with China D two, and we're like, ah, mm. "China D two, uh, go fuck yourself, <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, China D 2 Except, except the Rick James skit made him like seventeen million dollars. Yeah, we've made about <laughs> seven, we've made yeah, about we, seventeen dollars. Yeah, yeah, we. <laughs> None of that happened. Uh, uh, but yeah, thank you, everybody. Seriously, it was that was. Something that was completely unexpected. I mean, I we go up to the Spiderco booth, and they know who we are. That's, That's wild. How do they yeah. know? Because they have because people, they, their yeah, underlings, every, listen every, to us. Every knife production facility in America is listening to our. It's nonsense, full of people apparently. who are bored as shit. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. really. Yeah, it's well, most, I, most people especially who have listened to our episodes free. more than once. That's. Yeah. Those, those are the real That's MVP. like fucking. <laughs> that's some serious masochism. You need to go on kink.com or something for that shit. Yeah, my my biggest response was like, yeah, we listen to your podcast all the time. And then I'm like, I'm so sorry. I said the yeah. same thing. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? Wait until there's a whole genre on Pornhub of people just listening to the podcast over and over. Holy shit. Austin's here. A wild bunny. His door here. again. Jesus Christ, dude! You made second. you made gr great time. You went from an hour and a half to fucking twenty minutes. Twenty minutes? What the uh, fuck? Would you turn the flux he... capacitor on? <laughs> I made shit happen. Wow! <laughs> Apparently, you you could defy the laws of physics. Well, that's good. You just got in while we we're discussing this new genre on Pornhub we're inventing. Oh Close yeah, down that glory hole early. Yeah, <laughs> but I got places to be. People that are into masochism, it's just going to be videos of people w listening to the podcast for hours on end on loop. Yeah, on loop. Okay. Oh, All right. Well, that, it's so terrible. Are we going to put pictures of our? Are you guys going to put pictures of yourselves up to uh, really clinch the deal? Um, I feel uh, like we need like a Millie Vanilli situation. We need a face for the podcast who is more handsome than any of the four of us. <laughs> I don't know, yeah. man. I, I was kind of crushing on Jake a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I did. Oh, you know, is there is there slash fiction about the podcast yet? Because <laughs> I'm sure some. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I'm glad someone knows what slash fiction is. All right. I don't know what slash slash. Is. Google that sure. one afterwards. Okay. So speaking <laughs> of Pornhub, did you guys cover yet who uh, who had a makeout session with Aaron? Um, uh, we've touched upon whatever happened with Jake we, and him. You say, okay. Uh, well, what's funny is when you say makeout session, do you mean like kiss raped? Wait, someone uh, was kiss raped? I, I, I mean, that, that I was, was kiss, kiss raped. I was kiss raped. Okay. Uh, so here, there was tongue involved, but uh, go on. There was definitely no tongue involved. Just, uh, just, just his wet man lips on mine. Just for, like, man on man kissing. Yeah. The, <laughs> and let me just say, it was like a. It was just out of the blue and very, very sudden, and uh -huh. that's what happens. Good cover. That's what happens. At, yeah, what happens at Blade Show stays at Blade Show. It's what, about ten thousand dudes in one room. Some stuff. And then go ends down. up on the podcast. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> we do not have no the one Vegas listens policy. to it, right? And Instagram. No. Yeah. Your, your secret is safe with all five listeners. Yeah. <laughs> so, Austin, uh, did you enjoy the show? Yeah, it was good, man. I had some friends who had to bail last minute, so it's always kind of a bummer when you you're expecting people to be there and they don't sh they can't show. But it was good. It was um, I don't know. I spent a lot less time in the pit this year um, than probably in pre prior years. Um, so I don't know. You guys probably spent a crap ton of time in the pit after the show. Well, to be honest with you, we didn't. Like, yeah, Jake. Was Jake was sick as a dog, so he didn't That's want true. to be there. So every time I looked at him, he was like, oh, I'm dying. Take me home. And then Aaron's leg hurt, so I had to... <laughs> yeah, any energy that? I had... Fucking Friday night when I called you guys at 1230 <laughs> and, you, and you had to leave because Aaron's leg wasn't hurting? Yes. 
I'm sure up. that's I'm sure that's an understatement. <laughs> like Aaron's leg hurt. Like didn't he blow it up in a war? <laughs> yeah, well, he is walk he is walking around with two leg braces like two 90s braces. era Stone Cold Steve Austin walking around. Yeah. <laughs> Like so you're, you're taking care of of two different men and making out with at least one of them. This I mean, is, this you're is, the blade show wife. This is the life I lead, Austin. <laughs> and yeah, and and chauffeuring us around. Mm -hmm. Wow, entertaining us with um with his accents. Mm. Did you guys tip him with dollars, or I mean, what's going on? I got tipped with nothing. Oh, well, it's because you well, weren't we one got... of the official blade show prostitutes. No, they had. There was. There was. We were talking about the amount of prostitutes at the. At there the weren't show. as many as prior years. You're Is this me. really a thing? Yeah. What? <laughs> and 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 we're not talking like you know five out of ten prostitutes. We're talking like eight, nine, ten out of ten level prostitutes. Yeah, like you're like. Dollar. How did I not? Yeah. Know, no one has ever talked about this like openly. That apparently Blade Show is just a glorified brothel. Well, these are the smartest women in the world. I mean, you have these guys yeah, who, who like knives, so they're already weird as fuck. Yeah. They're rolling in with eight to ten thousand dollars and they're striking out. Damn, wow, that is genius. I didn't even consider that. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure all, and, and you know all. all and you know all these guys, you look at them, you know they're nothing in three seconds, and then you just get to sit around for, you know, fifty seconds. Damn, minutes. I'm gonna brown bag some Viagra if I ever go and see if, how much I can sell that shit for on the pit in the pit. <laughs> you would definitely look like a drug dealer there. It's amazing. Okay. He wouldn't. He wouldn't be the only one. I'm sure. That's true. I'll sell. I'll sell something. It comes with a uh, Brad Blunt fucking lanyard bead, and inside of it is <laughs> inside of it is a fucking Viagra. You could just you could grow a mustache and go as Elijah. I have a mustache. I'll have to cut everything else. You have, what you need to do is get one of those like like stereotypical disguises with the glasses, the fake nose, and like a mustache and go as Elijah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll try it. I'd rather go incognito. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so what was the highlight of the show for you, Austin? <sighs> um, Besides getting to meet us. Uh, I, I did hug you, at, at least one of you, I yeah. think. I, I hug. hug Levon. Yeah. Um, I did go over and irritate Brian on multiple occasions. That was pretty highlighty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, man, I don't, I don't really know if, the, if I had a highlight per se. To be honest, um, what's what's really funny about this is we've been we've been on this show now, this particular show for about half an hour, forty minutes. We have not brought up one fucking night. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we we gotta get all the pleasantries out of the way. All the like, oh, it's the people, all that shit yeah, first. Um, it's the prostitutes. Yeah, I mean that's that's qual. I mean that's like HBO type of prostitute level, you know, mm -hmm. where you just I don't know. I, that was the most impressive thing my first year there, where some guy was like, "Hey, dude, that's a prostitute." I was like, "Really?" I was like, "Oh my god, that is quality." Yeah, wait until this is sixty minutes. It's the expose on this shit. That's true. Next year, that's what you guys will cover: prostitutes of Blade Show. Oh, <laughs> uh, interviews with the escort. Does Blade Magazine dude, give out an award kidding? for them? That would be the most listened to episode you guys ever do. It's so true. It's, it's so true. We got to put it together. Set. Make yeah. them tell. Make them tell us who they were uh, with at the show. Servicing. Call everybody out. <laughs> Servicing. Yes. R ruin a couple <laughs> marriages is, on the podcast. Bob Trezol is the first one in line. <laughs> <laughs> we could even. Here's, the, we here's even... the problem, though. Some guys come to the show with either their girlfriends or their wives. Their boobs are hanging out all over the place. So. I wasn't sure which ones were prostitutes and which ones were there with someone. You know what I mean? But but if you approach someone who you thought was a prostitute and they weren't a prostitute, things would get weird real quick. <laughs> we don't let on why why we're interviewing them until later. You know okay. what I mean? So it's, that, it just that'd turns be an out awkward to... interview about prostitution if you don't acknowledge that they're prostitutes. It's all in like the post. We do it all in post. <laughs> Some and bad then we can, we can do we can do awards that mirror the the knife awards, like best Ooh. import, <laughs> best tactical best, folder, <laughs> best value, <laughs> best value, <laughs> yes, best value. <laughs> budget, budget of the budget, uh, value budget. of the, whatever. It just, is. just tell yeah. me, just promise me the overall knife of the year award. Will, I mean, the overall prostitute of the year award will not go to an Italian woman. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's just a as, tough call, it's man. Just as rigged. <laughs> it's just, the, the women might be better than the knives. Um, I would probably say so at this point, but we can get into yeah. that later. Mm -hmm. Less of the prostitutes were certainly made in China than eighty percent of Blade Show. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah. we, we didn't bring any then? <laughs> Not that I know of. Mm. It's 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 the made in China trade show nowadays. Mm. But pretty much, it, it really had. I mean, the ma- the Chinese manufacturers really did bring the heat. Huh? Like there was a lot of great stuff from all of them. Well, because yeah, because ZT only came with one knife. Benchmade came with nothing new, and. I don't know who else makes like, American made yeah, knives. And then, and then there's 900 custom makers that you don't care about. Yeah, no, but we're talking production <laughs> knives here. I, there's not obviously there's no custom knives coming out of China, but there. Uh, there's there actually there are a few. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's like, like a handful. that J J Bin guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, his stuff is legit. And then what, yeah, whatever Carson is. Tech Labs was, I think people tried to claim that that was a custom maker. I don't. Yeah, well, they certainly charged like it was. Yeah, there was like eight hundred dollars back in the day for those things. That was nuts. And Reich, whoever you know, the, yeah. the mastermind behind Reich with the four thousand dollars. Richard Wu should. Damascus things. Richard Wu should just sell his knives as custom knives. They're obviously they're not selling his production knives. Dude, he had the same knives on the table this time that he did at New York. Because nobody is buying them. But then he had a couple new ones, like that Thor. Six the Thor six is Thor- is six hundred twenty five dollars. Is that the six or the five? The the six, the small one. What's the what's Dude, the big the one? The six is the monster one. Isn't the six the big one? No, yeah. Yeah. the six is yeah. is on Blade HQ right now. It's three point two five inch blade. It's the mm. skeletal one, and it's the the Thor five is slightly bigger. But then yeah, there's that gigantic one that is not for sale yet. But the small one is six hundred and twenty five dollars. He should just sell this shit as a custom. It's all CNC. He can just say he's a CNC custom maker. Can I just say the Thor is a really stupid name for that knife? It's not very thor like it doesn't make any fucking sense yeah Dovan, didn't didn't you get to pick up and handle the big one yeah i handled all of them yeah i mean i assume they're like impeccable <laughs> <laughs> is that why is that funny i don't get it because you handled the big one <laughs> and, and all i needed them. some yeah. clarification as well we're, we're, oh. we're reaching now yeah well, um you'd, you'd have to to handle a big uh, one <laughs> da, 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 da. Uh, but yeah, they were very nice. Obviously. What I really wanted to get to is all the OTFs that they had. Oh, yeah. Reich? So, okay, so here's the weird thing. They were on the table for Reich, and then if you went into the back corner of that secondary room with the good air conditioning, <laughs> where Aaron and Cold Steel were. <laughs> where everybody got fucked. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> there was another table with another Chinese guy with a different brand with the same OTFs on it. Yeah, because Richard was making them for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then but then he was trying to sell me on their uh what do you call it? Their OE work. And I was like, oh, it's because of the exhibitor pass. So, so is he doing oh he's claiming he's an OEM when someone else is OEMing him? Yes. I that was the most confusing thing to me. Either way, the OTFs were amazing. Like Ooh, super nice. I, I didn't see any pictures of these. Uh I, I posted a whole bunch of them in my Oh okay. Maybe because I just had no idea who the hell they were coming from. I mean, if we're gonna talk about OTFs, uh they they weren't as nice as the deadlock. Yeah, that that you sold. Yeah, how much did um, your deadlock prototype. sell for? Dude, it was a shit ton. Like <laughs> I definitely I put. I'll admit I was wrong. <laughs> you were you were you were very wrong. I was about thirty six hundred dollars wrong. Holy about, shit! Did it sell. really go for thirty six hundred? Yeah. God damn, that was a hell of an investment. The, yeah, I, it worked the, out. The the part of that I enjoyed the most was the validation that. For the last few years, uh, I mean, there there was no uh, there, there was no physical trustworthy way to value that knife. But I've been saying you know twenty five to thirty five hundred for since the day you got it, basically. And uh, I, I mean, it was only off by a hundred bucks. Did, so. did Gavin have any of the newer ones that are less expensive? Oh yeah, the Model Bs. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they're, was, they're awesome. The uh, the interesting thing is he had like two Model Bs that were. Um, I think auction pieces, and then he had Levons, and I mean the other ones went for like twenty six, twenty seven, somewhere around there, and his went for like thirty six. It was a clear winner. Damn. Um, well, yeah. mine was the only one with Damascus and Ruby, so yeah. I mean, it was. I don't know. It was. It was cool. It was funny. As Gavin was like, "Hey, if you ever want to let go of like your um, your mud auto, you know, I could sell that for you." And I was like, uh, "No, I will <laughs> keep that." I, I definitely want a mud auto. They're cool. I was telling him, I was like, look, dude, I, I could sell tons and tons of frame lock flippers before I ever let that thing go because it's unique. You it's know, very it's, cool. Yeah, it's, it's it's super unique. All this stuff is, but um I had one of the first run of the of the muds, the millet muds. 
Mm. Um, the manual. It, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't as nice. I mean, it was. It was good, but it did, had like the action was sort of like wishy washy. Mm. You know what I mean, they hadn't nailed it down. Like, well, back, that was the, the the whole thing. It was that it was sealed, so mm-hmm. it's never going to have like you know fall shut bearing out action because it literally had like big suction cuppy looking things to keep all the dirt and grime out of the pivot. My yeah, but friends was pretty dialed. Um, yeah, yours, your friends. I, I remember watching that video. He got that on the third or something run that that came up. Yeah, that thing was that thing was dialed. It was. Yeah, nice. it seemed much nicer. My mine like the, the detent didn't really keep it in. Whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. you guys handled the uh, the orbit that I purchased. Yes, <laughs> that is my like runaway favorite purchase from Blade Show. It's a, it's a yeah. toy. I freaking it's, love it. Yeah, that was a good purchase. I don't know why I don't have one yet, but. You know, that and the deadlock are the two that are kind of like on my list that's like they're they're unique. You know, I've got again, I keep buying frame lock flippers and I just have so many of them because I like them. But mm-hmm. those are things that are like standout knives in, in a collection. Exactly. Because yeah, they're so different. Yeah. I mean, I need to get another deadlock. Part of the, the reason I sold it is because what am I going to do with a, a prototype with carbon fiber and, and I mean, with Damascus and rubies? Yeah, you should just go for the one, not the dagger, but the one sided blade. And you know. I mean, it's already illegal for me to carry an OTF. I'm getting it double edged. Come on. OK, now. might as well go full Monty with it. Exactly. But at least it's something that even in my yard, I could carry it around. You know what I mean? Because I'm never going to never going to cut anything with the other one. <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, hashtag knife life, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see i don't want to go through like everything we bought but i want to talk about stuff that that really stood out to us and su- some surprises that we uh we may have seen i was personally surprised by how many crappy fucking knives i saw <laughs> okay i like this yeah. i can get behind this dude oh my god and everyone wants 500 to a thousand dollars for this shit this one guy i'm i'm not, i can't even remember what the name of the but they make a knife that looks exactly like a Grimsmo Rask, okay? <laughs> Only it looks like they, they literally shat it out. Is it the North Arm Skaha or is it someone else? I'm not I'm not gonna talk I'm not gonna yeah, mention I, Oh, I, I thought, thought you just didn't remember about. it. <laughs> It, it's it's too bad because if they just put a little more time into it, they can make them decent, but they're they really are shit. They're so bad. Like mm. But they I are mean, also only like two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars. No, these were marked at five hundred bucks, dude. Uh, maybe maybe we're not talking. Maybe we're not talking about the same people in the are second we? room. Yeah, they were in the second room. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. All right, Shit. I'm excited to get this afterwards. Or someone just send the name in the chat. <laughs> oh God. Uh, but either way, I, I mean, people were asking a lot of money for this stuff, and I mean, they were humble about it. They were aware that it was bad but then they put them on the table for people to buy wait what is that how can you be <laughs> humble and aware that it's bad but also pricing it at like 500 dollars? that's well, what i'm that's what i'm trying to say no the it, way they can. got around it was uh, we're only been at it for 11 months you know blah 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 blah. you know but you should still why are you still selling shitty good. knives i still don't understand no, it, it the you, what you'll find someday when you freaking take your ass there, Dave, is that you'll walk up to some tables and some guys give you the used car salesman bullshit oh pitches. Some guys stand there and they say, hey, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. I, I really appreciate you stopping by my table. Not people like Brian, you know, but then you have other people who are just like, these are the best knives ever and blah, blah, blah. And we use this and this and this. And you pick it up and you're all, dude, this thing's a piece of shit. Like, I'm not a noob. My favorite was like the, this booth. That just had a big sign that said the ultimate knife. Oh. It was like some like uh, like aluminum karambit. Did they do a demo? Oh shit, yes. The ultimate knife. They it's this guy that hawks these fucking karambits. Uh, how how can you come to fucking Blade Show and put up a sign that says the ultimate knife? It's the ultimate knife. knife.com. Yeah, it's a sketchy ass dude who it, the website is such tactical bullshit. It's super mall ninja. It's hysterical. Everyone go to the ultimate knife.com and watch the YouTube videos they make. It's I, it's just the complete I don't give a shit. Like I'm gonna come to a knife show with real knife people and I'm gonna hawk my shit at this show like I do on Instagram. Yeah, it's it's insane. It, it's just a complete lack of caring. Yeah. It's true. I thought there was gonna be someone with a cutco knife cutting through like a shoe or something as a demonstration. Uh... Uh, probably. That might exist. Oh, did Rockstead yeah. do the dumb shit where they cut the bamboo and Whatnot? I, we didn't even see rocks. I didn't see rocks. <laughs> I think they were there, but probably. Dude, I didn't even see Enrique Pena, Pena like until 
he we were just standing at the same booth. I didn't even see his table. I wouldn't have recognized him even if I did see him. I saw a picture of him after. I was like, well, he looks totally different. Yeah, I right. guess I don't have much perspective on just how big the room is. The main room, at least. It's it's enormous. It's, like, there yeah. were so many. I had friends there that I was supposed to see. I didn't even see them once the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Where, does anyone yeah. know what the attendance numbers are on Blade? It's thousands, I mean, right? I, I, yes. I heard 10,000 somewhere sometime. Shit. And that stuff. Okay, yeah. It certainly, it certainly felt like that. Damn. Okay. Um, and they did they did say that this this was the I don't know if it was the biggest year ever but it, it had grown significantly uh to and that's why they had to add that second room that kind of created so much controversy I mean, for the, It's a good thing it's yeah, grown so much cuz the oh, Blade yeah. magazine isn't exactly flying off the shelves anymore. Oh yeah, the the show has got to be yeah, there. The magazines are done. Yeah. 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 I, the it, only calls I've ever got from anybody in a magazine where you can tell was just like the greasy fat bastard that lived in his mom's basement with sweatpants pulled up over his belly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very vivid image. So basically Carl that's, from Aqua Teen Hunger That's Force. the only calls that I've ever got, for sure. <laughs> hey, you want to feature your knives in my uh, magazine? Come on. <laughs> Send me the pictures by Coop. <laughs> the pic that, that does, pictures that, that by air. Coop. <laughs> he probably had an AOL email address. Which yeah, is definitely AOL. Maybe MSN. At cool. earthlink.net. Mm. <laughs> Yo, that someone coming bad. in 2018 with the Earthlink email, I am ignoring you. Straight up. Right. Mm. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else was terrible. Yeah, please. I mean, there, uh, there were a bunch of tables with just crappy, crappy knives. I assume this is mostly on the is... custom end. No, no. These no, are just like crappy production companies you've never heard oh, of. Oh, really? And is like on either side they're flanked by like incredible quality incredible knives. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And so and, and honestly their tables were mostly empty, you know. Um the people selling glue and some other shit, you know. Uh just we there's some weird tables there. So last year my friends and I were talking near this table, this guy who sold glue and no one was at his fucking table, and he comes over. He's like, "Hey, can you guys move because people aren't aren't going to be able to see the table and come over?" And we look at him, and we're like, "Are you serious?" Dude, the guy was just probably just huffing it under the under the table. No one, no one wanted his fucking glue. You know, <laughs> is, that, is that why the, he had like the three big glue signs that were like monstrous up in the air now? Yeah, yeah, because he, he last year his sales were probably shit because no one could see his glue because you know there were too many people standing around the table. So this year he took measures, and I'm sure sales went from zero to ten dollars. How many? How much Mi fucking visual cues the, do you need for glue? <laughs> minus the the glue sign cost. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got. I didn't even. Yeah. I didn't even see these fucking things. That's just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was fine until he told us to move because we were blocking the side of the table. We weren't even near the front of the table. We we're standing in those one of those aisleways, and he was concerned people would not be able to people's, see the table from the side. People's glue dreams were not able to come true because. Can we of get you. this glue guy as a sponsor? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, he would probably send you free. I glue. want the I want the king of glue on the podcast. I want to hear his life story. Glue king. Does he have like a, a castle like Bussy has? I don't know, but he deserves a mug. We should make a mug for the Glue King. <laughs> Blade Show glue, glue King. The Blade Show Glue King. Oh my god. Okay, so he's on the interview list for next he's year. Out, what a rocketed to the top of the list. This is a sticky situation. <laughs> start, start preparing the puns now for the Glue King of Blade. Uh, <laughs> there's just so many. Oh god. Um, in terms of knives that we liked, or mm -hmm. uh, let's see, you got one of those uh, Riot Jacks. Yeah, I definitely want to talk about probably that. The, se the second yeah. worst name for a knife. Well, his brother, the designer, his yeah, English name is Jack. I get it. Yeah. Still a terrible name for a knife. Yeah, I, I won't put that past. I mean, I wasn't planning on buying that. I saw a picture. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I go up and I was like, oh, I want to see that. And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I mean, this is really good. I saw it that morning before you had walked over there. I was like, well, I know Austin's going to buy this. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, was, yeah. it looked unbelievable in the pictures. So it's I handled just so it. Huge! It's it enormous. Is, it is a monster knife. Like it, in the picture, I put it next to the future. It doesn't look that much bigger, but it is in hand. It feels significantly bigger. Oh, I couldn't. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, it's very big. I I didn't realize that it was going to be that big. A, big it's knife. mildly disappointing. Yeah. Kind of wish it was a slightly more reasonable size. 
Normally that doesn't put me off for the knives, but it kind of did on this one. I don't know why. I like it enough, and I'll. But it didn't make me want to spend the money right then and there. For I assume it. the. But yeah. it is. Sorry, I, I I'm back over ninety knives again. So zero fucks given. I just it's like yeah, I can find a spot for it. The, the one with the brass inlays must weigh a shit ton. Oh my god, that thing was heavy. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Wait, someone bought? Who bought that? That we know of? Did yeah. Andrew from yeah, Fanatic Edge buy? Probably. Yeah. I saw him with at least one. They probably yeah. had three at the show. Um, it felt nice, though. Oh, the way dude. the finish they had and stuff on it was very nice. It's contoured. It feels amazing. It's an integral. It's got a gorgeous blade shape on The action's incredible. And I, mean, I think you got the one that I was I was contemplating, the one with the flame tie. Yeah, I got the flame tie. And, you know, they had ones with, like, a hand rub blade or just a straight satin. And I was just like, you know, I'm feeling a straight satin on this yeah, one. Yeah, the belt I, satin I, looks awesome. Yeah. And I don't know if the one I got is like a special edition for the show because it's got a damascus steel um, pivot pivot collar. It, se- it um, seems like some of those have them. I don't know if they're going to do that on the production run. Yeah, yeah. Because my I bought a K4 from Riyadh at, at the USN with a damascus steel pivot collar, and he was like, "Oh yeah, we only made two. And I was like, "Okay, yeah. all right, <laughs> I'll take it." Oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. Th- those look super nice, and the price is insanely reasonable for what it is. Wait, how much was it? Because I bought two knives and he yeah. just told me the price, I think, and I just I think gave him the money. Said they were so like, I I think people said they were four like four fifty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I paid seven seventy for two knives, and so people were like, how much was it? I was like, uh, it was a portion of the seven seventy. Yeah. Well, the Valhalla is two eighty, and that's the other one you got, right? Yeah. yeah I'm not as stoked on that one. Well, it's because it's just the Valkyrie. I mean, I ha- oh, dude, yeah. I have oh. It's- Oh, I love the Valkyrie. I have my Valkyrie 2 still, so that's the only reason I don't feel, like, super inclined to get one. And it's six ounces. They're pretty pretty big, the Valhalla. Yeah. You guys know the story on the Valkyrie? Yeah, yeah the Faisal. So Faisal, you mean, somehow got screwed out of something. Fort Henry screwed so, him over? Yeah, so, you know... They, they ordered a production run. Faisal designed it. Fort Henry ordered it or paid for the run. And I think they were supposed to have, like, a 110 knives total run. Mm-hmm. Um but because Riot has pretty rigorous quality control, they threw out 10 knives. You know, they didn't meet quality standards. So they only ended up with 100 knives total. And so, you know, Faisal was supposed to get like 10 knives or something, right? And basically Fort Henry was like, well, we didn't get as many as we were supposed to. So here you get three. Fuck off. Well, yep. And so Faisal was like, uh, no. He told David, don't make any more like that. We're done with that. Yep. I remember that incident. I still have my Valkyrie too. I sold my Valkyrie one. Yeah, a great knife. Like, I regretted selling mine, and so when I handled that one, I was like, this is nice. I'm like, you made eight of the ones with the copper inlay, right? She's like, no, there's only three of those, and I was like, okay, I'll take it. If they do a Valhalla, I like the Valhalla blade shape better, but I like the carbon yeah. fiber scale on the on the Valkyrie. I do like the Valhalla more than the Valkyrie, personally. Mm. I haven't had my Valhalla in, my Valkyrie in so long, I don't even remember how it compares to the Valhalla, but it's a Persian, it's a flipper, it had a copper inlay. I mean, I don't know what else I could ask for. Integral. Know? Yes, an integral Persian. Mm, word on the street is someone's working on one. Yeah, but... I heard that word. Oh, okay, you heard that word? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, he messaged me right away, and he's like, hey, guess mm-hmm. what? We're working on one of those. And I was like, um, yes, I'll take one. Well, when, he to- when, he, when, uh, when he told me about that, I was like, Austin just jizzed in his pants at the very thought. I did. I did without any coaxing. It just yes. exploded. It happened. <laughs> looks now it looks like the end of an exploding cigar. <laughs> <laughs> how was the uh, how was the rest of Riyadh stuff with like the Lambert collaboration and the, the Tasha good. stuff? I like I like that a lot. Actually, that was a dumb question. Yeah, was, of course, it was good. What's yeah. funny is I liked the Pena collab more than the um, than the Lambert. Yeah, the, those just went live on uh, was it Blade HQ. HQ. Yeah, I have one on the way already. They're they're I think they're just more unique, you know. I mean mm-hmm. it's uh that traditional style recurve bowie, you know. Mm-hmm. It it just it's it's a little bit more different, and so I think that's why it's probably appealing. Yeah, so. I mean it are one of them the one with marble carbon fiber is already sold out, so Yeah. Jeez. And price in I I know I know I know the quality's gonna be yeah, there. Three sixty five. That's not it's not bad. That's not it's cheaper sure. than I thought. Yeah. The um there was the I, I have, the one I have coming is the green G10, okay, which is kind of not bad. I have a lot of carbon fiber in my collection already, so might as well yeah. have a little. Green um, G10. I don't know if you guys saw, but Adam Purvis he got the green one and mm-hmm. then he blackened all the hardware, so he got yeah, rid of instantly. the blue. I blame him. Be, I, you know what? Here's the funny thing: we were I was talking to him last night because he got the one for me too. He picked up one of the ones for me, and that's who 
that's how I'm getting one of them. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, I was saying to him, it's like, why would they put blue hardware? Why would he choose blue heart, blue hardware to go with the OD green? It looks terrible. Done something else. And then he goes, you're right. And then the next day I see all the new hardware he, he did the black and tie and stuff like that. Yeah. The blue does not. Did he do it to yours? Not the one that he anodized. I'm getting one that's not and that's not modified, but uh, oh. I do want to change the screw color to like gold or something. I think it would work better with the uh, pretty easy to scotch yeah. bright off the anodizing. Yes. So the blue looks good on the other two. Oh, yeah. though, the carbon fiber yeah. and the big tie looks great, but yeah, the G10 one it's kind of meh. I I thought I saw the 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 carbon fiber one and the regular tie with polished hardware. Oh, They're on Blade HQ. There, it's it's blue right now. The production, gotcha. the production versions. I, I'm well, sure I think, they. I think they polish did is going to is going to be the way to go, Levon. Mm -hmm. well, that's super probably, easy to right. do. But fortunately, we can we can change it 75 times. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> can I say though I, that the one thing I didn't like about the Lanny is present on this, and it's the blade thickness. And oh, I know I caused okay. a fucking uproar by saying that I wasn't 100 million percent thrilled with the Lanny, which everyone else was. Jesus Christ. It's a, it's You're a terrible. Pretty, it's You're a pretty terrible. fucking nice knife. It's an incredibly uh, nice knife. Everything about it is executed extremely well. I just think nothing would be lost if they made the blade thinner. That's it. I'm just not sending you anything. But, ever but, that's fine. I just, I, what am I, what do I have to fucking go blow Leong because, <laughs> because you sent me the knife? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. God damn! Yeah, the blade could be a little bit thinner. It doesn't need to be this thick. That's it. Why was that the first thought that popped in your head? I don't know because yeah, don't know. because apparently this is the most important knife to ever exist, judging by the uh, reactions. So it was just it's just a all around mark of quality. I mean, it's yeah. a nice ass knife. It's incredibly well made. It was one of my favorites for 2017, if I'm honest. I think it's awesome. And the, the marble carbon fiber ones that just came out in M390 look awesome. But I don't know. What's funny is I like the standard carbon fiber more than the marble. Because it has like the uh, like a a linear structure to that knife, and I think it works with the lines a little better with the regular carbon than it does with the marble. But the marble me. probably obscures the mill the mill yes. lines a little bit more since it doesn't Correct. really enhance sort of some contours. of the details are a loss. Yeah, but I don't know. Marble carbon fiber seems to be the thing now. It's or just bolster. Is that the new wave? It's it's just, you know, it's less played out than regular carbon fiber. Correct. And then the marble to be played out, and then it'll be black wood. Black wood will get played out, and then we'll be to... Does anyone pearl. make black wood I anymore? Know. I thought that shit was horrible to work with. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, all carbon fiber causes cancer. Yeah, no, I thought it was just weak, because the, the, oh. it's not weaved, basically, or whatever. None of it's structural on these knives, anyway. Good point. Unless it's structural. <laughs> but, if it is, but if it is all gone... I do still have a piece I will sell for 10 times what it's worth. Let's see. Ah, thank you, Jake. <laughs> um, You're welcome. No, nah, so, some websites seem to have blackwood carbon fiber. It just doesn't get used very often by people, it seems. Uh, let's see, what other knives? Should we go through more of the Chinese stuff? Well, what, what did anything blow you guys away? Like, I'm trying to think if there's anything that, like, blew me away at the show, and honestly, nothing's really coming to mind, because I think everything was debuted before the show, you know? Um, that new ZT was the only surprise i mean that was definitely not didn't blow me away it's nice i want one yeah it's really nice um they brought the th the blade thickness in quite a bit on that one it's the same thickness i think is like the 0609 yeah. it was quite a bit thick. yeah it's mm -hmm. it's three millimeters it's awesome yeah it's so that very lightweight it's gonna do really really well it's basically just um, a big kershaw atmos which i'm yeah. fine with because because levon sent me one of those and i forgot that this is how small a three inch bladed knife is do you not like that one either? No, it's it's excellent. <laughs> it's e excellent budget knife is just I don't know. Do you guys carry three inch bladed knives regularly? Yeah, yeah. I would. I don't care. I would. Yeah. yeah. I like bigger knives. Yeah, I like bigger a knives. Small as for well. me. So yeah. it's just But I get to wear jeans. If if I'm in slack someday, which I that's what I'm working towards, then I'm gonna have to re completely. Set your goals my... high, buddy. <laughs> uh, I hope to one day wear slacks. I hope to one day have to completely reinvent my whole collection. See, here's here's the way that the, the career ladder goes. You make shit money, you're in jeans. You make pretty decent money, you're in slacks. And then you start your own company, you're back in jeans, and you make amazing money. So it goes jeans, slacks, jeans. Yeah. If you follow the, the normal uh, you know, way of things, I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, one company I used to work at, this CEO, man, he, he wore jeans in, like, board meetings with investors. He wore a hat. He just didn't give a shit. And I was like, respect, you know? 
Dress for the our, job you want. All of our all of our dreams involve gym shorts. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> and spider code dragonflies. Gym boo. Gym shorts, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speak for yourself, man. Well, <laughs> this is the this is the guy that wore Crocs to Blade Show. Who who wore Crocs to Blade Show? Jake did. He wore Crocs in the pit. Jake, what are you, one of those sixteen year old fucking Balasong competition He's- entrants? Just embarrassing. Yo, the kid the with the time. cargo shorts, oh the Metallica God. shirt, and the real tree camo Crocs. Yes, that guy. <laughs> yes. Yo, shout out to him. He's the MVP of Blade. Oh my God, he was everywhere too. Reinforcing every stereotype about people that play with butterfly knives. They yeah. like swarm the Blade HQ. Booth. Yo, they're all thirteen. Mm. Yeah, I bought a Balasong. How did they get out of middle school bought, to do wait, this? Wait, 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 wait. You you bought a Balasong trainer. Yeah, it's way more bitch status than a Balasong. And uh, I and then you bought a pocket clip that cost it almost as much as your Integral. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did that too. And I waited in an hour to buy. It. I waited in line for an hour to buy. Oh it. my god! I know. Why do you like that? Jesus Christ, Brian! <laughs> you beat me to it. So, what are you tumbling? Is it is it my cyclone? It's your hopes and dreams. Yeah, maybe. So, not my cyclone. What's the new one called? The chicane. See, I still want to call it by a storm name. It, it was my compressor, sorry. <laughs> so, it, yeah, LeVon kept making fun of me when he found out I got the trainer. He's like, what are you going to get, a fedora? And I was <laughs> thinking in my head, LeVon, it's way worse. Everyone here with a ballast song is like 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> they've, got their, they've got their hat on sideways, and yeah. they're weaving through the crowds while flipping these knives. Oh I my swear God. to God, someone must have gotten cut. How, how did we misjudge it? That we were totally off on our, uh, on our oh, wild yeah. stereotypes. They were all like 12 years old. I was like, oh shit, this is going my no, back. But... Here's the thing. You're only assuming they're 12 years old because that's how they dressed. And by their, their patchy beard. Like, right, what are they, know, fucking Andy beard. Milanakis? They were definitely 12. Some of them were 12. Most Some were of, possibly most younger. Of them were twelve. Yeah, they. Yeah. All right. It was. Bad. I just want to know how they got out of class in, school. in middle school to like go enter well, a ballast song their parents, competition. If their parents are buying them ballast songs and letting them, <laughs> yeah, sk- sure. driving them to Blade Show, they're letting them skip school. I mean, these kids are definitely going to grow up to be alcoholics yeah. or drug addicts, felons. I don't know. I'm okay with that sweeping yeah. generalization. No, yeah. they're going to end up suing their parents for kicking them out of their house. <laughs> Thirty years old, and then and then they're. And then what's going to happen? They're going to get interviewed on CNN, and it's going to be a disaster. Michael, Michael oh, Rotundo was, definitely plays with Dallas Sox. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was worthy of the cringe compilation it made it into. Dude, holy crap. Um, but yeah, let's talk more about that pocket clip you bought. Yeah, no. a, a steel flame pocket clip. Oh my god. Yeah, get off this fucking podcast, man. Dude, what the See, fuck? Here's the thing, like, it it's really got is skulls. Cool. It really is one of those guilty pleasures, you know, where I used to make fun of people who bought this shit. And then I got like one of these clips just because a friend got it. And he's like, hey, do you want it? I'm like, yeah. And then it's like, I really like this. And I don't want to tell people that, but I really Is it do. like sterling How silver much? or something? I, I doubt it. I, it's probably just straight metal. <laughs> metal. Straight metal. <laughs> metal. Just, <laughs> it's just fucking pop, pop metal. Pop metal. It's China D2, bitches. They used quality China D2 in these pocket clips. All right. tell, tell everyone how much how much it was. Because this is that kind of show. Well, see, here's the thing. It, uh, it cost me $300, right? Now, here's the sad thing. I could turn around and sell this for like six or 700 but I bought it for me, so I'm not I selling I hate it. everything you just said. I know. <laughs> I actually vomited a little bit. Yeah, that's true. I hate everything you just said. So wait, you put it on a flashlight, right? Yeah, yeah my boss, <laughs> 35. <laughs> it looks it looks pretty badass. Uh, it looks, at least I mean, it's a cool flashlight. Yeah, it's a very cool flashlight that three hundred dollar pocket clip is attached to. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. What if one of the think, what if one of the skulls breaks off when you're carrying it? Uh probably worth even more than you know what I mean? Patina rare, shit, rare rare two skulls. Yeah, super yeah. rare, man. I mean the still flame market is if you think about it, it is it, it defies logic. It really does. They've they've it, created it, it, like a market for themselves. This in, this entire market, this entire thing, this podcast defies logic. I mean, if you when think you're... about it, Steel Flame is probably the most successful company in that entire show because they produce pocket clips. They sell for three hundred dollars. Oh yeah, they have people waiting in line an hour to get them. I mean, custom makers can't even operate at the level that these guys do and move the product that these guys move. And it seems like the demand never dies. I mean, they should be a case study. I've told custom knife makers that. I'm like, listen, 
you need to look at at like steel flame, see what they do and try to figure out what the fuck it is. Cause you're missing out on something. It's, they have a huge market in Asia too. Like they're, they, they sell that shit like crazy over there. Well, I don't know. Steel if you flame guys... has boutiques and stuff in China. Did you guys see all the guys walking around blade show? No, dude, there, there were a lot. And some of those guys I'm, are, I was being crazy. facetious. dude. Oh, okay. I was, I was, was concerned. It was like everywhere you turn. Yeah, but I mean, some of those guys were carrying upwards of two hundred thousand dollars in cash. There was a guy with a seventy thousand dollar watch on. No, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand. I saw that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was crazy. Damn, big spenders. I mean, I actually, I hate to say, it, but if you're a real big spender, you have someone there buying the shit for you, like the Russian oligarchs do. No, what that means is those are the people there <laughs> buying it for them. Those are the under. Those are the proxies. Those, those are the proxies. Yes. Yeah. Well, Rexford wasn't mm-hmm. there this year, so there's no thirty thousand dollar Rexford auction. Uh, and the Shirogorov was. Yeah. What did those? Yeah. What did the Shirogorov auctions go for? Sixteen five. Okay. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, that was the open bid. There was a closed bid, and then they, you know that one probably also went for sixteen or something <laughs> like that. Well, um, that'll pay for your ticket. I I touched it. <laughs> yeah. Do not touch. I walked, walked walked right up to a please do not touch sign and was like, hey, um, Levon, can I pick this up? And Sergey goes, da. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, don't touch the blade. And I was like, <laughs> was, cool. were you basically not allowed to handle the $16,000 knife you were going to buy? I can imagine that why you wouldn't. I mean, he was gracious enough. He let me pick it up and it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Yeah, the, I couldn't. The, I just couldn't resist. I was like, "Dude, can I? Can I please touch it?" The problem is, one of the knives on the table had a like a legit polished blade, and yeah, so he was the a, one. Yeah, you scratch that thing at a show, and it's like you have to refinish the entire blade. Yeah, right. okay, that that's understandable. Or if you have things yeah. that discolor with hands touching them. Yeah. Oh, with all the necklace. One of the, one of the videos I remember most vividly from last year's blade was. Uh, I wish I remembered the maker, but it was it was that same situation of mirror, like super, super mirror polished blade. And he had allowed everyone to touch it. And so every picture of this oh, thing, yeah. it looks disgusting. Like really, really, really bad. Do you, does yeah, anyone yeah, remember you this? Said, you said that yeah. in our Instagram DM that it was really, okay. it was really nice, but yeah, it was super it fingerprinted. Won, it had won some, some award and, you know, we went for all this money and every picture of it, it just looks like trash. I was think it, was it a Rexford? The, I think that's the one that had the frame and the blade that were polished. Yeah. It, it looked like it had just been dipped in neck grease. Yeah. It well, was I really, tell you really what, bad. speaking of that, I don't know what people had on their hands, but those knives get like fucks. Yeah, sticky. They get like this sticky grime on them. It's like what the fuck? People. I I I was I was kind of uh, unpleasantly surprised. I used um, (laughs) one of the like Purell hand sanitizers. Well, more than once because I was trying to be nice and not spread my uh, my plague. But at least one or two or a hundred of them had like lotion built in. So I'm thinking I've got like nice clean dry hands. I go to pick up a knife and it just and it feels like I'm a neck beard <laughs> spreading my my purell greasy mess all over. Um that was that was unfortunate. I didn't even know that that was a thing, but apparently it is. Yeah, greasy mouth breathers. I mean, I think it's that people were sweating and then they were like talking to someone they like fold their arms, their hands are just getting all over their sweaty a arms, you know. <laughs> and then they reach out and they touch something and it, I mean that show gets that show was pretty warm in the morning. It's nice and cool, but once you hit midday, it's oh. super hot. So. What's funny is like I sweat ninety percent from my face. The only place I don't sweat from is the palms of my hands. <laughs> so I was I like, like prime. I remember you showing that off to someone? <laughs> yeah, I was like, look, my hands are fucking dry. Why? Well, yeah. at least at least it doesn't turn you into some sort of mutant that just corrodes knives when he touches them. That's true. Be, we can add that to the cup. X-Men. Mm. Mr. Dry Hands. Dr. Dry Hands. My hands Ooh. stay dry. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Yes, please. Please do more uh, do more accents for but us. It, other knives you couldn't touch? Uh, the, the story about the Daryl Ralph Bala song that you can only handle if you have a pre-order was hysterical to me. It was he even at the show? Yeah, he was there. Apparently, there's some long-standing controversy about this Bala song that they're producing, and they said that you could only handle it if you had a pre-order, 
and you were not allowed to take yeah. pictures of it or videos. Long. I wonder if it's as long as the Mars knife. <laughs> That's a long-standing pre. I, th- I think Balzano was probably not at the show, if I had to guess. Balzano oh. was not at the show, but he had some knives at the Recon 1. Did you get an opportunity to handle those? I did. Cu- I'm curious. They were actually really nice. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, Levon got to handle a few things at the Recon 1 booth. I, yeah, oh, there yeah. was a lot of Shiragorovs there. I mean, whatever. That's not the tone that Jake was using. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's I just, think I know what he's talking about, but I don't want to end on someone's shit list. No, that's stupid. <laughs> um, no, but honestly, Paulo's knives were, were actually kind of nice. That's unfortunate. I doubt he made them. I'm mm. sure they were made by that's someone a... else. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there were some there were some things that I uh, didn't like about them, but I couldn't say anything really bad about them. I'm Especially looking after, at the, uh, I'm looking at the Kickstarter right now just for shits and giggles, and uh, some dude chip chip one hundred and one. <laughs> well, like once a week, this dude's coming in. Any updates? Any updates? Any updates? I hate to break I hate to break it to him. They're not coming. The, the update chip chip 101 is that your money is fucking gone. Yeah. It was used on Coke and some other shit a long time ago. Who knows? Sweet, sweet Coke. I'm hoping not. Maybe maybe those those knives will turn up. <laughs> you remember what happened the last time you guys delved in what, what did Jake say? Blind optimism? <laughs> I don't remember anything that happens in previous well, episodes. Mm-mm. Well, it's right. never gone well. Which one are you referring to? Jake, there's All nothing optimistic about Jake whatsoever. So. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just groans. He's like, "Yeah, the boundaries of your mortality are the only remorse you'll be shown." <laughs> yeah, contemplating suicide on the sky car and the, <laughs> at the at the airport. It's like, hmm, what if you? Yeah, they they had a lot of trust in that automated system. Yeah, it's they really like, did. Like there was there was a door. There were a set of doors on the right side and a set of doors on the left side. Yes. And it was like you entered through the right. But then when it was time to get off, if that door had opened again, you would have plummeted to your death. And, and the way they the way it was it was everyone's hustle and bustle, like someone would have definitely walked off of that platform. Yep. That's what did I say? Had. Just just strike a Jesus Christ pose and pull right <laughs> off. <laughs> oh god. Jake the Jake ever the martyr. Yes. He <laughs> he died for our sins. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Well, anything else cool that, that I missed or that you guys really, really liked? Or... I feel like there's got to be one, more. You know what's funny is one of my favorite knives from the show besides the Orbit is uh, the, uh, what's it called? The Omen, which was a Fanatic Edge mm-hmm. exclusive thing. And I really like it a lot. That's the persian looking one? Yeah, the Elijah. Isha. Uh, Are okay. you borrowing that or did he give you one? I, I bought oh, it. Oh, did you money. buy it? I didn't yeah. realize that was something you actually bought. I thought that you were just borrowing that one. No, nope, that's mine. Are those out yet? No, nope, but some of the others are are uh, on borrow. When the one is my new favorite of Elijah's oh, designs. That, the, yeah, the the Arrakis, Arrakis, Yeah, yeah. Elijah that, had but... a it's... lot of stuff. He did. Yeah, yeah, and actually, it was it was really neat to be able to uh, to basically just spend the day with him because um, in his case knife case that he was carrying around were a number of. Um, prototypes that I, I had no idea about, and I'm assuming most people didn't know about. Um, and some of them had some flaws because they were prototypes, but there's uh, uh, at least two or three of his designs that are not out yet that are going to be like must have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, like the Black Star, and then also a few others that, that um, I don't think so, anyone knows about yet. So there's on the same topic of Elijah's prototypes that were there. There was those two Wii knives. There's one called the, uh, I the they have the Eterna crazy and then the Pleroma or something. Yeah, okay, yes. So the Eterna, the big Warren Cliffy yeah. thing, that is ground impossibly thin. There is a finish process that they did on that titanium that blew my fucking skull apart. Um, it's uh, they polished that titanium on the frames. Then stonewashed and then anodized it, so it gets this like really crazy iridescent effect. Oh, it it, it, it kind of looks like marble. Yeah, it looks like marble. Or do you guys know like the chameleon paint, like they do on like the TVR Tuscan? Oh God, and all that yes, stuff. yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? But awesome. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? It looked really cool. That shit's that making a comeback. It was beautiful. 
That was, it was amazing. I, I like the uh, sway back one that he's doing the pleroma or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that thing is yeah. very cool. That one's really nice with that floating thumb stud or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that should yeah. that should shut the people up about the non practical design. It's about as practical as it gets. Yeah, yeah it that's feels a, nice in hand too. That was my favorite of his new ones. I think yeah. mm-hmm. um, it's just a cool knife. Yeah, even the Araka, um, which is basically a, a mini. I mean, in some ways, it's kind of like a miniature version of the. Escaton. Uh, Why do you Escaton. keep saying it's miniature? They're literally the exact same size. Well, it's, I don't know. It's just, just feels like a smaller knife. It, it kind of fit in the pocket a little bit nicer, and it was not as, um, I, a lot of people complained that, that, that it looked like it wouldn't be ergonomic, even though it really kind of was. And then this one, um, I think was was a much easier sell as far as the what's funny is when they're both closed like I have both of them in my possession they literally look almost identical you wouldn't even be able to, be able to tell that but they feel very different. different though don't they sure I mean it's a toned down version of yeah, the it's and which is funny because he actually designed the Arrakis first you know, I wonder if the, if the Escaton would have been better received if the Arrakis came out first and Escaton was like, hey, mm. we, we took the shit even farther. I had and, the same thought. Yeah, that sounds, uh, very that sounds very possible to me. But, I mean, I think the Escaton sold out anyway. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's it's well received. I think I think it was a little polarizing at first. A little polarizing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, if the goal was a Halo project, it's like, look what we can do. And here's, they, they did right. it. And here's the other thing is like, that's a five-year-old design from him. Like everything that he's been putting out recently has been incredibly elegant, usable, awesome. So, meaning, meaning he drew it when he was five. Right. He was five years old at the time. Mm-hmm. Just like that meme. The that thug knife meme. First, that's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, of. the thug oh knife God. meme was so good. It was, that was uh, thug knife. You, you guys haven't ever met him in person, but he's a funny dude. He just... He's kind of an asshole. He's a funny asshole, and that was right. to that that post hit so close to home. It wasn't even it funny, was but so fucking it was hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, God damn it. yeah. The Zeta is actually. So I, I'm quite happy with mine. It's a very. It's actually way better for EDC than I expected. So, yeah, oh, that's good. Um, yeah, I'll post some more pictures of the Arrakis. We knives had that other really interesting knife that looks like it was made by like Serge Pachenko that has like that the exposed poster. spring. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that. I don't think I would it was buy cool. it. I mean, you can't open it with any sort of. You have to open it with using gravity. Yeah, it's basically there's yeah, no. It's opening. almost a gravity knife, literally. It it was, yeah. Again, you know, when you have like almost a hundred knives, you're like, yeah, why not another one? You know. But if you have like one or two knives, that may not be the knife for you. Another no. one. Uh, I do like that it's going to be called the Chimera, the one with the clip point. I'm, I'm excited for that one to come out. Of So, yeah, I would say of I'm the sorry. new Wii stuff that they showed at Blade, that one was the one I liked the most. The, the funny thing is, is that we, we, we act so surprised by the amount of stuff they put out. Did you hear how many wire EDMs they have in their factories? Oh, God, I can only imagine. <laughs> 15 jesus christ wow. Those what is this like the machine machines. city from the fucking matrix yep god damn that's what shenzhen is <laughs> i have a theory that it's just all the other manufacturers that they've bought yeah out. they're just all sublimated into we knives mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean it wouldn't be the first giant knife conglomerate <laughs> now that there is the mkm or the makita company or whatever yeah, I talked to them about that. Yeah, well, you know, the Italians swept the fucking awards again somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's an interesting project. So it, it's comprised of um, Mercury Knives, who I've never heard yeah. of, Lion Steel, Viper, and then um, uh, Fox yeah. Knives. So those are the, the four that make up. There's another company like Mazarin, who's not a part yeah, of it. Yeah, that's who makes Steel Will stuff. Yeah, so they're not a part of it. But basically what they wanted to do and the way they described it is you know, we wanted to uh, promote Maniago as a city because Italians are pretty prideful people. Not to mention and, that their their economy is tanking. So there's that. Yeah, it could be. They, they said it wasn't. You know, I said, hey, are you guys struggling? They said, no, we're, we're as busy as ever. But <clears throat> so this is what they're saying. I'm, I'm not going to make any commentary on it because I really don't know. But they basically said we wanted to come together and do some large scale projects, really promote Maniago. And then they're also going to be doing some like agriculture i mean they're going to be going to some other fields that just leverage their manufacturing capabilities and not even knives 
Yeah, it's wine. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, so I, I chatted I chatted with the guy who's who's basically in charge of that whole project for a good bit. Interesting. So, yeah. I, yeah. I mean they somehow keep winning these blade awards, so Yeah, they, they swept that shit. Yeah. I don't um, know if that I, despite not me not liking anything. At yeah. Their I like the rock. It's mm. a full flat grind. Is it? Or a flat grind. Not a full flat, it's a flat grind. It's not convex. All right. But so uh, I mean, if we want to get into the Blade Show Awards, uh, let me let me Google these just to. I didn't even look at. I, I can. I just sent it. I just sent it in the group. Yeah, at, oh, least, at least a list. Um. So the Fox Knives <laughs> Suru, that's the one that's a carbon fiber frame lock. H- how does yeah, that cool. work? <laughs> I don't know. I I I requested to get my hands on one as soon as. It possible. said it's like ninety percent carbon fiber and ten percent steel. Don't I don't really understand what's going on there. Is it 10% steel, like the, they, the lock bar insert is steel, or is there somehow steel mixed in with the carbon fiber? I don't know. I didn't see any steel mixed in, but if you think about carbon fiber, they inlay you know, some thinner strands of um, like copper and stuff, yeah. right, for the lightning strike. So who's to say they can't inlay slightly larger strands of steel? Do you, so do you really think that they're manufacturing their own fucking carbon fiber? Uh, it, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> no. I haven't heard that they are, but Maniago legitimately is like an entire manufacturing. There's, there is. That's true. So I don't know for sure. Brian, didn't you experiment with the idea of a carbon fiber frame lock? Yes. How did that work? <laughs> um, it needed a few more iterations for sure. But it's, is it a doable concept? I don't know longevity, you know, on it. I can get the bar to bend but I don't know how long. Yeah, I, I don't understand how carbon fiber could really like handle long-term spring tension. just doesn't seem like it should. I mean, they do. I mean, look at people that get fake carbon fiber feet and shit. I mean, oh, those things true. are springs and... Huh? Interesting. Well, that's, that's that one overall knife of the year. Yeah. Do you know what's interesting about the line steel rock, though, is it, it wasn't super easy to get to that pocket clip where you push it out from the side. Mm-hmm. Because the problem is, you know, when we push our pocket clips into our pocket, it's just a one hand push down. But with this one, you have to try to manipulate it open and then get it into the pocket. Yeah. No. How does it? I think big, it, no. It, that's, it, that's one of my biggest pet, pet peeves uh, of the, all. In the what I would lives. think would be an improvement would be basically you push the button and the thing pops <clears> out. Like that's what I originally thought it was. I thought it was a yeah. spring loaded clip that you push the clip and it springs out. That would be a better design, in, in my opinion. I think it would be easier to use and more functional. Um, but then you end up with a really fucking thick knife, yeah. although it wasn't thin. No, I mean, it, in theory, it could be not too different than it is now, right? I mean, I don't... Yeah, just, it just has to, you need to... Hmm. I don't know. Well, it has to be a mechanism. When you have yeah. only a thin frame to deal with, it's hard to make a mechanism and make it, you know, cost-effective, too. You know, so you're you're trying to battle two different things at the same time, and it's just you know. It's, it's Can tough. I ask another question about that? I, did you try and put it in your pocket? How was the spring retention? Because I had it was fine. Oh, okay, because I had a Marfio and Tachyon three that had one of the spring loaded clips. I was kind of like a fulcrum, yeah, like the sigil, and that was fucking garbage. <laughs> the, the problem is, it would push itself yeah, out. Of your yeah, yeah, it didn't hold at all. It was literally like just a hook. It's a good thing that you both carry ballast songs all the time, or else that. I mean, it was on the sigils, on the production sigils too. Oh, on the sig- Oh, that's right. It's the it same clip on the sigil. sigil, and that was yeah. why I was oh, spring loaded clips. This is going to be fucking slam dunk this shit right in the trash can. You know, I had a fucking badass spring loaded clip. What? My deadlock prototype. It did. Yeah, because Grant Gavin Hawk had done that for a while. The grip clip. Mm-hmm. I remember yes. people used to put those on their Sabenzas, but they don't make the grip. Yeah. So the the rock clip functioned completely different. It pushed the entire thing out to the side. Yeah. It wasn't flipping it yeah. up, and so. Once you got it into your pocket, it worked great. The problem was just trying to – it almost took two hands, you know, one where you grab your pocket. That's what she said. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what she always says. Yeah. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah. I thought it was cool, though. You know, even if it's not perfect right out the gate, like someone needs to do something different. You know what Yeah, I mean? they need to so. put NFC chips in their knives. Oh, my that's God. That's the innovation of the year. What was the most innovative knife? Because that's what it was. I didn't ask him about the NFC chip, but in theory, I mean, it could be a good idea if it has like the year warranty information on it, and you as the that owner. That would be cool. I don't know. You yeah. know, if it was a personalized, if it was this, 
Yeah, I mean, if it's basically like if they just embed the certificate of authenticity or whatever into the NFC chip and your ownership information, I mean, that that would make sense, right? If it was a higher dollar knife, then that would be cool. You know? Yeah, especially since everybody keeps their knives forever. So that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I think so. Uh, you know what? We give this guy a lot of crap for the lack of innovation, but kudos to him for trying to make everybody happy. Hinder? Rick Hinder. Yeah, he won oh, the yeah, most innovative cool. American design with that knife. Mm -hmm. I want one. That'll be yeah. my first Hinder. It's request. pretty It's pretty cool. I'm curious to see what the production knife's going to look like, because he showed well, a custom. I want, I want that, because the, the funny thing is that system is going to be on every one of his yeah. knives. Mm-hmm. With the tool embedded in behind the scale, yeah, on, on the back spacer. <laughs> the the washers live behind the scale. Okay, the tool the lives in the back spacer, yeah. right. and it's got like a detent that holds it in place, so that the back spacer doesn't just like flop out whenever you're holding the knife. And the knife looks like it has a detent. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it flips nicely. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, it it was funny that he just he's marketing this as a joke. Like he was like he kept saying like it was almost like a joke like yeah full track and uh, 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 full track and then and now he's trying to sell it. it makes the only knife that everyone cares about yeah <laughs> the grind on the fire tack is awesome it's thinner than it depends behind the edge an XM18 is not a s sort of great cutter and I'm kind of hoping the full track does something in between the two at least. You know, it's going to be funny, though, is when he comes out with this system on all his new models, the price on his old models is just going to... Oh, plummet. my God. Like, yeah, he's going like... to destroy his secondary yeah. prices. Don't say that yet. Maybe they'll, it'll end up being terrible and everybody wants... That is true. So you yeah. either need to have, what, very tight tolerances on the sizes of the washers or very loose pivot tolerances? Well, it looks like the like the, 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 the bronze washers are, like, fit, yeah. so they make yeah, up yeah. for the extra space. Yeah, with the, the nylon ones, do they, like, compress it all? I mean, I guess they're... Are they more likely to compress if they're thicker? I have no idea. No. All right. It, no, the, the, here's the, a the, question. Who's ever going to put the nylon washers in? The real Someone. the real hinder enthusiasts. Yeah. yeah. Rick, Rick himself. Yes, Rick himself. And that's it. That should be his uh, <laughs> his Instagram. He, this genuinely, this knife is made for... There is no real practical scenario where you need to change out the bearings. This is... I, the funny thing is, in the interview with Blade HQ, he's like, yeah, if you want to change out your pivot system yeah. in the field. Like, if what? you're in the field, <laughs> the if you're in the field and you're in, a, and you're in such a such a tough scenario that you, you get a bunch of grime in your bearings, yeah. just, spend, just spend 15 minutes swapping out the system. <laughs> See, and you guys laugh, but there's going to be a bunch of guys down at the gun range who get a little bit of dirt in their pivot, and so they sit down on the bench and they completely disassemble yeah, and wait, reassemble the gun Yeah, wait range. until marine recruits have to be able to disassemble the pivot and reassemble it with a different bearing, That's blindfolded. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm, I joke, but it, it is, it's kind of right up my alley. I mean, yeah, definitely. No, it's just, yeah, it's accommodating it's a cool. stupid knife collectors. It's definitely yeah. not accommodating real hard users or whoever those people yeah. are. Here, here's I, my I mean, question, though. I'm, I'm just anxious to see how it, how it, uh, it is received, you know, succeeds. Or, yeah. I, I think it'll do well, but I wonder if they're running on stainless steel washers because if you think about it. I didn't see it, any races whatsoever. Yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, if the bearings are going to create a pocket in there, like a small pocket from use, and then what's going to happen if that's going to affect if you switch back to washers, you know? Interesting. I feel like they should just use races for all of them. It, yeah, the, the problem is, though, is there's only so much space in that yeah, pivot when you've got those super... Th I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've talked to some makers, and they're like, look, I'd love to put races in, but I can't compromise the walls of the titanium to sense. do it. So, oh, it could be um, a thick ass knife. We don't know. Yeah, he did uh, in that interview. You, <clears throat> he did show the profile. Um, it's not. Uh, I don't. I don't it's, know how to. It's hindery. Yeah, yeah. It, but but it's not as thick. No, it's the same. It's, it's not as chubby looking as an XM18 or an XM24. It's the same thickness as an XM18. Okay, he did say. Yeah, but on some of the smaller knives, though, they, that's where they might run into some issues where it's like, okay, can we actually fit this system in here? Right. You know, because he's always used super thin washers before. Yeah, they def definitely cannot get that on the fire tack. Yeah, so I don't I don't know if it's really going to end up in all his current models or not, or if they're right. like, yeah, this actually did Yeah, work. I'm curious about they're that. They're only going to put it in that and the Jurassic with the ugly scales. <laughs> uh, the Jurassic. <laughs> uh, what about the Paisan winning imported knife of the year? Oh, did it? I, I knew, I knew, I knew you were gonna say that, and 
we handled it and it nice. makes a lot more sense oh after yeah if you said it. this was a 520 twenty dollar custom knife people would lose their minds it's just it's it's just handicapped by the fact that people you know see it as a production knife which it is so it's funny uh i also saw some spider codes that i that just ruined me like because they're just so bad <laughs> really uh oh my god oh, the one with the tail and the feet what the fuck is that <laughs> The spider co poppy, and I called it the poopy. Oh, is it? Because, because it's, and it, here's the thing it's called the poppy. It looks like poopy, but it's shaped like a puppy. <laughs> That's some serious wordplay. Is this the one you weren't allowed to photograph? Yes. Yeah. For good reason. Dude, you unfold it, it's got legs and a fucking tail. What in the, what in all fuckery is that? Perfect for the bird line. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. It's it's gonna be like a four hundred dollar knife. I can see it. Now. Was it designed by Ed Shemp? That's all I need to know. I uh, definitely. How much not. DMT do they have Ed Shemp just fucking mainlining to, to pump out that design? <laughs> Dude, I, words do not do this justice. I didn't even see the tail until I unfolded the knife and just set it down on the glass on its little feet. Yeah, when you, when that. I, I, I was nowhere. I was nowhere near like your world when you saw the tail. You really got my attention from across the way. Let me say, I was like, Jake, I this was, thing has a fucking. Is this tail. when you were gone off the edible on, too? I was, I was crushing uh, on some Rex Forty Five PM Three, and I hear <laughs> when that tail popped out. I hear you like screech. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was. It it just caught me off guard. I wasn't. I mean, Eric Glesser was standing right there looking for my my reaction to it. I'm like, oh wow, that's that's. Please a dog. tell me this is when you were high. Oh, <laughs> no, okay. this was this is before I ate the cookie. I was gonna say shout out shout out to Birdshot for the fucking. I can only imagine their internal monologue like, oh shit, I can't let Eric know that I hate this thing. No, because Jake was with me. He had abandoned me at the time when I had the cookie. <laughs> That's it's. I mean, the the paisan is nice, but yeah. What about the mid year offerings that uh the Sinkovich Spidey Chef is four hundred and ten dollars. It's it's much nicer in person than. Yeah. Man. The milling is nice. It's 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 that's it's definitely yeah, the, price. the drunken texture was nice. No, it looks like it's gonna be nice. It's just expensive. It, it was okay. I didn't feel like it was four hundred and ten dollars good. I mean, I'm not gonna be buying yeah, exactly. It, but no, it's just I I don't no. think it's gonna have a long product cycle. No. I mean, the problem is it's, it, you know, like you put it up against the new ZT offering. Yeah, it's like, and what's it's, the point? It's not like it's significantly better than the ZT offering or I, I like the ZT one better. So it's like 240 versus 410. I don't know. Yeah. It was or, nice. Or any or like for the same price you got that Jack yeah. for. Yeah. I like how Browse has already knocked off one of their other mid-year designs, the Tropen. His his new knife is identical to it with down to the wave and everything. Wait, what? Browse just showed a new design, allegedly designed by somebody else. And mm. it has a Persian blade, a wave, it's a flipper, and it looks identical to that new Spyderco Tropen. Oh, the uh, Tropen is the one that I actually am going to The, buy, the one with right? the compression so lock that cuts you when it's closed? Yeah. Is that the one that's like 100 and some dollars? Yeah, it's 188. The, the, yeah, I kind of like that knife. The Caparo or whatever, the one that's carbon fiber with the compression lock looks really nice. Oh, yes. That was my favorite of the new Spyderco yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. the, the, the rest can be thing was, pretty much ignored, but... Yeah, I didn't care about the rest. That was the one I was like, wow, this is really yeah. good. I'm excited about that one, but... Hey, you didn't care about the poppy? <laughs> I, well, there's no pictures of it. How am I supposed to care about it? I can't wait. That's gonna there was a fucking, the fucking moratorium on the... Uh... I, I wouldn't be surprised if that thing never sees what, the What do you think the catalog day. image where they're showing the poppy is going to look like? What, are they going to have it so I, superposed in, like, a dog park? No, they're going to have it, like, on the rings of Saturn or some shit, just taking a walk. <laughs> I don't fucking what is know, it dude. Fucking, it's, it's, oh, God. Is the, is there any pictures of it anywhere? Did I dream Is it a this? fucking Smash Mouth song? It's just going to be walking on the sun? Yeah, well, mm, nothing that, surprises me with the spider coat. That was worse than a that pun. was. That was a bad reference. I apologize for that <laughs> one. I pretended I didn't yeah. hear it. Chris Reeve won the American Made Knife of the Year with their flip joint, which is very, very nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does cool. something different. That's all I understand. Yeah. You know, was, he was funny. Is is he was drunk uh, in the pit, and I was like, hey, so what about the three point two five minute? He was like, I'm not making any more old shit. Oh, okay, <laughs> Tim. That's right, we were there. It was funny. Yeah, he was like, don't ask me about this or that or any of those sizes. It, you know, it props to him. I mean, honestly, what a massive weight on your shoulders to come in and take over 
Chris Reeve knives, yep. right? And have to like prove your weight. And his first thing out of the gate, man, he fucking knocks it out of the park. Yeah. So Tim's also an awesome dude. And I am keeping yeah. that video forever where he drunkenly said that he loves me. I, I will <laughs> cherish that. I will have some sort of way to display it on my mantle. It will play on repeat. But the cool thing about that slip joint is that it's easier to is it easier to open or easier to yeah. close? I easier just, to open than it I is just to close. I played myself. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. But it's it's very cool because the one he was passing around in the pit with with us had a had an acrylic scale, so you could see how the mechanism was working. So did Harsey yeah. design that mechanism, or did someone at CRK <clears throat> design that mechanism? Uh, That's my question because I know it's a Harsey design I, knife, but. I think we were a little drunk too. <laughs> I can't remember. I thought he said Harsey designed the mechanism, but I could. Be I mean, wrong. it's still cool. So, yeah, it, it was very cool. I definitely, I, I can definitely. It say was I not what I was expecting. Yeah. No. And I think I want a fancy one. I, I'm sure they'll do some pretty cool ones. Yeah, but it's yeah. nice. It's, I, I do find it kind of hilarious that they went with a 3.13 inch blade. It's just slightly above the legal limit for so many places. Mm -hmm. I gotta say, I, speaking of slip joints, uh, there were a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone was doing a slip crazy. joint. Everybody seemed to like wheeze slip joints. I wasn't crazy about them. Um, Aaron's came out very well. I like those a lot. Yeah, those are nice. Um, I didn't, Did they all sell out? Yeah, they're I mean, they were so cheap. But yeah, everybody was making slip joints this year. That's, I think Dude, best the tech fancy had ones. The fancy ones were, were, were reasonable, too. But yeah, the Wii, Wii Knives had a bunch. Didn't Best Tech have some? I don't know. Everybody's doing it now. That was my first experience going over. Was it Best Tech I went to go see, Jake? Mm, you, yes, maybe, probably. Yeah. Austin, was it Best Tech I went to go see? Uh, yes. I think it was Post Edibles. It was, yeah, I can't remember anything in between edible time. <laughs> Um, that's fair. Uh, but it, they were very nice knives. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's all I have Yo, to say. Yo, who, about who handled thing. the fucking ant lock? Oh, I did. Loved it! Wow, that was flamboyant. Dude, I loved it. I took a video of it for you. It is as good as we were. Is it really that good? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, did you hear about good. the price, it's though? Very, very good. Um, they said no. that it's going to be a little more expensive yeah. than they so, originally So thought. they offered someone the prototype for 500 and they said it's going to be around 300 Oh, that's yep. too much money. I'm out. I've been a truther. I've had the fucking tinfoil hat on for years now, and they lost me. <laughs> that is, yeah, that is expensive. I mean, the, honestly, the price. I should just go drive over there right now, just knock on their door and be like, um, you serious with this $300 nonsense? Yeah. What, what is so expensive about making that? I don't get it. It's a mechanism, I guess, assembly and everything else. Know. Who knows? Yeah. But all their knives are great. I mean, really. I liked everything. I was just stage. surprised to see yeah. that. Yeah. It was really, really nice, honestly. Like, I would pay, you know, low twos for that mm -hmm. thing without any question. But 300 man, I mean, that's that's a whole different level for, like, G10 and M390. It's you know? very, it's, it is very good, though. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. I think eventually, as they start to get, roll it out, the price can come down. But I think initially, it's probably going to... Got to get some return on yeah. it. But even still, I mean, that's a terrible way to do business. You know what I mean? If it's like, hey, we're going to charge you more if you buy it now. And down the line, we might make it cheaper. Well, I, I mean, mean, that's the way That's the way it is with every single product. It's a trickle down. I don't know. Effect, especially with most anything. knives, you buy them for the same price, you know, new as they are six months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but everything's a frame lock. Yeah, true. I don't know. I don't know what Mazarin is doing that it's costing them so much money to make 3D mill G10. I mean, it's funny because here's my thing about about uh, about Steel Will. They a lot of their knives are like the value leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we can't really say. Hey, I mean, there's got to be a good reason why they got to charge more for that. You know, that's this is me be playing. You know, devil's advocate. I mean, I'm I'm excited. That I hope it comes out, and I hope they somehow hit a more reasonable price point. But I don't know. Maybe it's also maybe a case of under promise and over deliver. Yeah, you know. I mean, otherwise they're going to get smoked by Wii knives coming out with like eight thousand different three hundred dollar knives that are way more mm -hmm. intricate and way more interesting. That's true. So, I mean, they have a fucking boatload of them. So, let's talk about some custom knives. Uh, let's see. Uh, Matt Diskin, I was playing with the Revolution. 
Um, and that'll be featured on our Blade HQ knife banter. Episode. Yeah, we can talk about that later. Uh huh. Uh, we actually included some pretty cool knives in that, um, including John Gray's splitter, uh, the deadlock, of course. Uh, Brian's. Chicane. So basically, just shilling for the people that we're friends with. Well, that, honestly, I wouldn't even call it shilling because we talk about that shit all the time. Like you're buying the maker, and I wasn't about to go on a show in front of people and start talking up somebody that we don't That's know. That's fair. You know what That's I mean? Fair. It's stuff that we know is good by people that we like. So that's what I did there. I got to talk to uh, Jared Von Otterloo. Otterloo. Uh, great guy. You know, I, I bought the, um, the Osteo. Uh, it was good to talk to him, which is funny. I didn't get to speak to J.D. Vandeventer when I'm there, and I, and I usually – like to talk to him. He's a really good dude. So he's one of the people I regret missing. Um, uh, Dr. Frunky, he bought one of the golds. The, yeah, who is that made by? Is it a French maker? <clears throat> JD, oh, Van, no. JD Van. I assumed it was either France or South Africa. So Yeah, I, I always mix those two up too, Dave. <laughs> no, I mean just like the, the design <laughs> cues. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. Uh, it, it's a very nice knife. Um. I still love my osteo. I, I, I barely had left my pocket while I was there. Um, Austin and I both got mini glimpses from the bag table. We yeah. were really happy with those. That was the the best mini of the different designs. Like the mini Quaken was good, but the mini glimpse is exceptional. And I agree. The mini Quaken, I mean, the proportions work better in person than they do in the pictures. Mm -hmm. But the mini glimpse is just it's just a really cool knife, and it's I feel you know, like. I feel like the lines are even better on the small one than the big. I I agree with you. Yeah, it's funny. Like they use bigger hardware on the smaller knife than they do on the uh, on the uh, the Wee knives produced large one. I think that's yeah. just because of the materials that were that they're made of. Now it's it's interesting. The large one was made by Wee, and the small one was made yeah. by Riyadh. Yeah. I feel like the fit and finish is is just a little bit better a the execution better. is a hair better on yep. the riot stuff i I, I very much agree with you and i, I mean I it's it's, really it's, why. it's not like uh like a Night in your day. face difference mm -hmm. uh, there's one thing that i do like about the the we knife with we knives produced large one is that crown spine on the blade mm. you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah uh but other than that i mean i think this we knife one is just quite nice yeah. Oh, they also have the, the mini bodega with the carm fiber inlays that looks super nice. Yeah, that is a that looks great. I yeah, love I would have probably got one, but those were just prototypes. They're not yeah. due out for probably. Yeah, I was like, hey, oh, Mark, okay. uh, can I can I can I have one? I'm gonna buy it. And he's like, we kind of need it right now. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah, but what they, happens they look is. Nice. Um, the, basically, at these shows, like Riyadh will bring prototypes for the different makers they're working with. And what Beg does is they base, basically take them back to the shop. They strip them down and they mm -hmm. just analyze the shit out of them and say, okay, this is what we want different. Exactly. Um, yeah. So that's why he wouldn't let any go is because they use those to, you know, they break Figure them down. Figure out what they, they want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beg, unlike some other people, they they really get meticulous on the details. Other people are like, oh, it feels good. Go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, not Beg. So. And that's why that I would imagine they, they cost a little more too. And you, once you have one, you realize why. Yeah. No, they were they were exceptional. So, um, yeah, those were good. Do you know who's my one of my favorite makers? I don't have a knife from yet. Was that Philip Georget, that front mm. flipper? Yeah. Oh, is that the, the guy that makes like the TIFF twenty three or something? Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, the fifth fifth twenty three. Yeah, that's a gorgeous. Those knife. are those are exceptional. Uh, the the French people really kind of brought it. This oh yeah, year. Mm -hmm. I would say that that is true. Yeah, Tashi's stuff looked looked awesome. I think those claws went for like six or seven grand. Did uh, didn't Hank buy that? Not Hank. What's his fucking name? Hank Green. Yeah, Hank Green. Didn't he buy that? I heard he did. The mm -hmm. the Wolverine claws. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but he has like eight different. <laughs> Uh, Riot models coming out now too. Yeah, those were very nice too. We got to handle all of them. Yeah. He has one knife in like four different sizes. Yeah, Tasha's doing his thing. I think Elijah still had the most models at the show, though. <laughs> it was basically just two people. It was just Tashi, Tashi and Elijah designing literally Pretty every much. single thing. They could have their own. They could have their own show by themselves. Honestly, throw, throw Beg in the mix, and you're good to go. 
I don't know. I, I feel like I just didn't see that much about the customs there. I don't know. They were there. They were Obviously. there, but they it was overshadowed by a lot of the production stuff, man. Uh, CRKT. We, I went to the CRKT booth and they had nothing. Yeah, uh, them and like I mean, Benchmade had that new gold class, but that's about it. There's a lot of companies that didn't have anything. Uh, I was playing with the gold class proper. I mean, it's really nice. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so good. It's really nice. Yeah, it's just eleven hundred dollars or they, something, right? They did a beautiful job with it, though. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a grand. Yeah, it's a thousand bucks that I'll never yeah, buy. I mean, who like you got to be a little bit fucking nuts to buy that but it's i would understand if you did because it's a nice slip joint it's but very nice. like slip joints you can get like custom ones for way cheaper than that oh my god yeah very nice custom ones too so i don't really know what to do about that yeah. it's yeah, an interesting I... way to spend money like there's yeah. it's funny how much stuff in that price range there's like literally an ass for every seat in that place yeah somebody i mean they're gonna sell every single one of those slip joints which is crazy to me to that guy who bought a Griptilian and has a lot more money than sense, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to go buy this thousand dollar Benchmade because it's the best knife you can get." Cabela said so. <laughs> oh, that's cool. What else did we see? I mean, we saw a lot of shit. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of stuff there. Um, uh, I, I handled Jim Skelton's knives. How were they? Not bad. All right. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, I, I talked to him too. I mean, you know, the, the hard thing is Jim has been such a controversial figure that when right. he started making knives, he knew he was going to get ripped to pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and people, I, honestly, like when he first started, I think people were ripping him to pieces. Now people have moved on, but mm -hmm. his work is probably more scrutinized than any other maker out yeah, there. Yeah, that's probably true, it's actually. True. The, the, only so. thing, the only thing that I think that threw a lot of people off is he charged like he was a veteran maker right yeah. from the get-go. Yeah, he did. You know, and that's 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 the really. I guess you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I don't have any problem with Jim. I think he's a nice guy. He was incredibly cordial to meet and, and talk to. So, yeah. Here's a question: Did you handle any of the Holt Blade Works Specters? I did. I did not make my nah. way to that table. I think Jake. There. I mean, there. There's big buzz on them. People really like them. I I don't think I made it to the table, but someone walked up and handed me one of them so that I did I did actually get to um handle it and, and you know feel the action and, and all that stuff. Uh, and it was very clean. Very nice. Did Brian hand you his his Holt Spectre thingy? It was a joke, but nobody understood it. <laughs> I was just waiting for an angry comment first yeah, before I could yeah. laugh. Yeah, right. He's Brian's on the floor. Has oh yeah, no, I, that was a, that was a missed opportunity. I was supposed to say it. It reminded me of one of Brian's knives, though, except much nicer. And, and <laughs> womp yes. womp. And it was much better and yada yada. But yes. uh, I mean, they look nice. Yeah, they I nice. like. I like to handle one eventually. Dave's definitely. Def, Dave's definitely going to be the guy. Am that I the Benedict them. Arnold of the group? You are definitely going to be. Um. <laughs> And then you can send it to me. Yeah, to play with. there we go. I'm, about to, I'm, I'm out of this podcast, like, Benedict Arnolding this shit. Let's just call Elijah up right now and just kick the <laughs> off. <laughs> He's got to grow his hair out a little bit more, but otherwise should be pretty good. Uh, you know what I was disappointed? That Brian didn't win the 4 P on the best tactical knife, but I'm okay with what won best tactical folder. What did the Svarn win? by Cultrotech, which is some... I have no idea where mm. they came from. Russian, Russian maker making insane yep. stuff. So like, it's actually not that unreasonable. I did. I did look at some of the close-ups. Uh, it's very intricate um, and looks really, really nice. You know, it was you know what was the, the that sealed the deal for Brian not winning this year was they used they used uh, something to tell that it was Domus deal. <laughs> yeah, seriously. They saw right through that bead blast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> oh, can we tell that story? What, Did we tell that story in the last episode? I, I don't think anyone. I don't think the judges listen to this podcast. They're too. Busy I just don't remember. If, I don't want to. I don't remember if we said it last time. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. The, the, the knife that Brian entered was obviously the chicane, and you can't have any like fancy stuff embellishments on your knife when you enter <laughs> in the best tactical folder. So Brian only made Dama steel chicanes, so he just bead blasted one of the blades. <laughs> And entered it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. It was it was pretty good. Now I have that knife coming back. It should be in the mail for at my house tomorrow, so I can finish the blade the way it's supposed to be. 
What you gonna do with that one? He wants it like the. Oh, he sold it already. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> he wants it. He wants it like the one that was um. Etched right and then blasted. What? You didn't hear Etched any and of that? blasted. I'm trying. Etched and blasted. You know the I had. There was two gray. Oh yeah, yeah. Chicanes there. One had a gray blasted blade. Yeah. But it was etched. It was etched deep first, so you actually saw the topographical look to it. Mm. But it was dark. Oh yeah, yeah. Interesting. I don't even think I saw that. You saw it. <laughs> they see the anger at the way he said he. I saw it. Like, I don't recognize it. any of the other custom knife award winners besides GTC and Ed Cope, who won Best New Maker. Although I don't think Ed Cope is new, so I'm kind of confused about that. But <laughs> well, well Aaron, the, Aaron Frederick five years. is new. Oh, okay. That's new enough, I guess. Aaron Frederick's new. <laughs> that was the running joke. He's like, I'm new. I mean, he, he kind of toiled in obscurity for a while. I think he could probably try and pull that off, go with a name change, and uh, introduce himself as a new maker. Yeah. I guess he could do that, put a whole spin on that. Shows up with a, with a, with a Yankee accent. <laughs> Hello, I am Aaron Frederick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be good. Yeah, but then the real Aaron would come out when he's drunk, so he'd blow it. He'd blow oh, his cover. Yeah. That's true. Uh, we we Jake and I both got a couple of the kitchen pandas. Oh yeah, yeah. You got I. You guys should have bought the slip joint. The slip joint seems more I interesting. To, but they oh, they were gone. gone. Okay. I was trying to let them kind of do a thing, and then I was going to. I'm just going to have him make me one. That's that's true. I mean, apparently you can just ask him to make him, you a knife, and he he might do it, or he might just not do yeah. it. Well, the fan by the time I got back to his table, all the fancy ones were gone. Oh, that makes sense. Um, running yeah, man, I don't, who, I don't think he brought anything home. Did he? No, he sold everything. Oh, good for him. Uh, which is yeah, the last load of stuff. He had a couple of fixed blades left, and I think one or two slip joints. And I think Blade HQ snagged them. So if you want one of the slip joints, I think you can actually get them. Uh, I think HQ actually right. the the buyers for Blade HQ were. Uh, frantically running around at the end of the show and he couldn't find them. So I think they went to uh, I, another, another. You know, I was fairly them. certain that they went to blade HQ even okay. after all the well, running around. Well, we'll yeah. find out. Yeah. Uh, can I say my biggest disappointment for blade in terms of just knives, the, the snacks, uh, CKF collaboration. I gotta, I gotta tell you, it was a little bit weird. I did. I just don't it. like the design. I, it's, I mean, I'm sure it's incredibly well made. Well, I didn't know if I was like doing something wrong because I couldn't open it comfortably. Every time I opened it, it like pinched my finger. Yeah, it doesn't look like the the sort of spider pole or slot is very accessible. I don't know. It's just it's so cool that they use the interlocking frame thing, but it's just not that cool of a design. I and don't then know. The, something then off about it. When the blade opens, it has like a little like pteranodon skull thingy, like a top flipper that's not really a top flipper. So yeah. Thing. And it like pinches your hand, like it, it's very strange. I I just wanted a cool. I don't know. I wanted something different for that knife. I didn't want to say anything to them. I was just like, am I? Because I was like, maybe I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> but I, I don't. Know. I just I yeah. It was quite expensive. How it's what's it's it seven hundred nine hundred dollars. Is that what nine, it is? Nine hundred and ninety dollars. Yeah. Oh my god! Kevin John getting paid. I'd rather save up. I'd rather save up for a few years and get a real snack. <laughs> You might have to save up for quite a few, but yeah. yeah well. now his table, his table price on the Buster was sixteen or seventeen hundred. Oh, that's yeah, there true. you go. You're, you're more than halfway yeah. there. Yeah, yeah right. I don't know, nine hundred ninety, and it's just not as nice of a design. The the IFS twenty was just such a clean sort of classic drop point, and this is just like it didn't, mm. doesn't make any sense. I was really confused by it. I was like, I was like, am I? I felt like I was doing something wrong because I didn't like it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I want to so badly. I don't know. What else did I... I mean, I feel like there's... Let me go through my shit and see if there's anything else I want to that talk about. That was a disappointment about. to me, but uh, I don't know. I was I was hoping for something. The funny thing is, that's being made by, I don't know, whoever CKF's OEM is, and then they're probably also making the clones of the IFS-20, so... <laughs> it's the circle of life. Yeah, I'm I'm eagerly awaiting the Satori, though. Did, did they have that on hand or anything? Did they even have a prototype of that? No, he showed me some pictures, and basically they're still working on a, a couple parts, like the pocket clip and the steel insert and a few other things. So it's just not 
quite ready yet. Yeah. Recenti is still, you know, he's still getting a, a pretty good amount of hype behind the Satori, and then he's redesigning the Snafu. Seems to be, uh, he, he's, he's been able to stay relevant for a long time. Well, he's been the only custom make, well, there are very few custom makers doing yeah, integrals. It's... I mean, the other ones are like Scott Cook and Ray Lo- Michael Raymond, and their their table prices are astronomical. Oh, yeah. uh, they had some some gorgeous knives that I saw on Instagram, at least. Yeah, thirty five hundred for one of the uh, starlets or whatever that he had wow. at the show table price. Whereas Recenti is like what twelve? That's that's know? funny because Michael mm. Raymond used to be cheaper than Scott Cook, so I can only imagine what a Scott Cook Loxa is now. I, I've never even seen uh, I've never even seen a Scott Cook for sale. To be honest, I, uh, maybe I'm not looking at the right places, but I've never seen one. I don't. For sale. I don't think we have like Eboss Haas money. I think that's what they go for. Yeah. So you know, if you if you think about it, it's like who makes integral that are reasonably priced. It's like well, Recenti is that Croatian so. guy, Dalibor. Yeah, not. I've, yeah, he hasn't no. really adapted to to changing tastes in the market. I'd say. Yeah, no. no, not not my favorite, but he's like the only other person doing integrals besides uh, I don't know, Craig Brown did some right, but he stopped. Oh well, yeah, yeah, he only made a couple though, and that's gone. Hey, so maybe Brian will make one eventually. Maybe. I hope so. You never know. You saw those two big blocks I had. Didn't oh you? yeah. Sounds like everyone's bladed out. <laughs> I'm definitely knifed out, yeah. man. Mm. Mm. I will say, Jake, oh, the prodigal knife returned. I got the fire attack, and I fucking love it. Oh, yeah, that's right. We, I should clear <laughs> yes, the air on that. We can end on that. Go yeah, ahead. You're going to clear uh, the air on that? All right, well. uh, yeah, so the next day... Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm in a bad mood because I can't find Dave's fire attack. And I go outside. I wanted to grab... I can't remember what I did. I grabbed something, came back in, started... Packing up, I had, wanted to send you a bunch of stuff. So I grabbed the closest uh, flat rate box to me as I'm sitting on my couch. And in there is the fucking fire tack. And I looked everywhere in that same spot. It was the one sitting on the fucking table. Yep. I could not believe that it was just sitting there. It was ridiculous. Yeah, well. I think I swore someone was punking. Well, I goofed because I could have parlayed it into one of those new Riot Jacks because it's like the same price. And instead, I'm stuck with the fire tack. <laughs> But I love it so. Yeah. Do you do you like how the detent is so stuck to the lock bar that the bar starts to bend down as you as you disengage? Is this like the... a strong detent to you? This is like a I would say like a good detent to me. It's <laughs> <coughs> oh, no. a lot of detent. If you I don't know. It, if you flick it, it just feels like a normal good detent. But if you just open it, yeah, slowly, you can feel it. I, I feel like the detent ball is going to get ripped out pretty soon technically overdone yeah. yeah well when the detent ball falls out i'll send it right back to you <laughs> put another one in cool send it to hinder for oh they'll love that <laughs> which i gotta edit this part out so they don't know i did that <laughs> don't tell them about this the uh super glue <laughs> all right well that is a lot of blade show stuff yeah yes it is Levin, you're the one that usually ends the episodes what am i doing here yeah uh we have a lot of stuff planned Maybe like something that's going on with Blade HQ that people might want to watch. We got, I mean, we have a, we have an episode of Knife Banter coming out. There's some cool things in the works with some sponsors and that kind of thing. Um, we have some ridiculous guests that you guys will be yes. very surprised to see. A ridiculous guests. Literally, from, no one has told me about this. Yes, plural, plural. And guests. Uh, and finally, uh, the first ever uh, collaboration, Knife Nuts collaboration product will be this available. is all news to me it may or may not be uh a knife of some kind that is also news to me could be a marital aid but more likely it'll it'll be a knife of some kind lots of fun stuff coming lots of fun stuff coming yeah and we, we, we were very uh we were very active at blade not not necessarily in just uh buying and chatting but all you know, trying to make the knife nuts fans Basically, it was just me walking around with uh, Weekend at Bernie's here. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why we didn't get to see a lot of the stuff we wanted to see. We were talking to a lot of people about this podcast and where we want to go with it. So hopefully you guys will see the fruits of our labor. There is no yeah. labor involved. Uh, yeah. First people that just stay oh, yeah. home. Yeah, uh, but, to Blade, there would have been some nah, labor. I'm not doing it. Austin, I want to say thank you for coming. 
We really yeah. appreciated it, and uh, we had fun meeting you. It was good hugging you. Yeah, it was. It was quite the. Uh, it was quite the moment. I met Aaron too, and that was enthralling, and pissed off Brian, and that was exciting. And I shook Jake's hand because he was sick and dying, and mm. I cured him. <laughs> the touch of bunny. The touch of bunny. It was quite snuggly, as you you might think. <laughs> God, yeah, we're all tired. Well, yeah, thank you guys for thank you all for listening. You you know where to find all of us at this point. We don't need to do that. It's like saying dead air every time there's dead air. It, it changes the whole. What do you thing. think of the week, Ghost Jake? You sound like a cat in heat. <laughs>